Kelly live. It looks like we're, we're in a good spot. Let's cash that thing. Let's go. Uh, let's go to our cards here for the rest of the day because, Dustin, we uh, you have, what, 18 – thousand place um, yeah look I woke, I woke up today and like baker mayfield felt dangerous look things that have been going well that daylight savings time the, really uh yeah, well, yeah, got, to the, got to you on the on the card today mess me up you know there look when there's a lot of players sitting out in the nba i'm always going to have more bets and uh things have been going well lately over at that vsin.com leaderboard 17 and 9 past seven days for your boy there, there we go. go however drop down to fourth because wes reynolds apparently is on one of his heaters mm. we're like it's just absurdity what happens when he the volume bets all start coming in so <laughs> yeah. i'm down to fourth behind gil west and aaron halterman shout out uh to the plus money prince there aaron halterman so all right let's go college basketball first yeah indiana at home catching three and a half on senior night against michigan state who's underachieved all year doesn't have the size to bang down low with the hoosiers i think indiana finishes the regular season i don't think i don't know if they win but three and a half in a big 10 where it feels like it's impossible to win on the road this year i'm going to take those points with indiana and that's a game coming up here, 4.30 Eastern, so starts in just under an hour. Uh, Michigan, St Michigan State now is on, like, the nine seed line. I mean, they've just been such a disappointment. And, yeah, you, Indiana, last stand at home, just good opportunity. One of those teams that, like, I don't – I know they're pro they're probably going to get in on name value. I, un I totally understand mm. it. But, again, I would rather see an overachieving mid-major than a middling – power five or power six, whatever they call it in college yeah. basketball school. It's just, I don't know what March is about. They underachieve. Don't reward them. How about the SOCON semis? This starts in about 25 minutes here from the great Cherokee Center in Asheville, North Carolina. Furman and Sanford. Dustin, going back to your, uh, your, your old regional <laughs> southeast days here. Well, the thing about this matchup is Sanford's a team I've monitored all year long. They are awesome. They're 17 and 13 against the spread. They're 22nd in offensive efficiency, 78th defensively. They shoot 39% from three. That's sixth in the entire country. I think Sanford's just a very dangerous team for Furman to go up against, only having to lay two and a half. I really like them here. I think the issue for Furman comes on the defensive end. I don't. I think offensively, these two teams are close enough. The problem is I think Sanford's going to get whatever they want offensively. Furman's just 229th def in defensive yeah. efficiency. I think that is the big hurdle for them to overcome, the fact that Sanford isn't going to miss, and they're not going to do much to help them miss. Paladins had that win over Virginia last year, NCAA tournament. Lost a lot of pieces from that now into the semis uh, here this year. One more that kicks off uh, for Eastern, Lehigh, Boston U. Second Patriot League semi. I'm sweating out the first Patriot League semi right now. Yeah, uh, Boston won both regular season matchups, uh, last seven of nine, in fact, as well. I think Lehigh's probably the better team, and that's why they're favored, despite Boston winning uh, two matchups earlier in the year. Lehigh's 18-9-1 and one against the spread. They have a bunch of—they have three players scoring in double figures. And when I look at Boston— they don't go very deep offensively. They don't have a lot of guys who can get key buckets. So I went money line with Lehigh minus one, 115 because it's a double top secret revenge game for double Lehigh. Double top secret. Top to secret. Overcome these last two losses. <laughs> so let's go Lehigh wearing those brown unis. And Brett Reed, Dr. Brett Reed, has been there for like 20 years now. That open one got bet up to one and a half or two. Bo those two wins, two for Boston, were by a combined three points. Yeah, so yeah. you talk double secret revenge. I mean, those it could very easily have flipped. The other way, based on how that thing went in the regular season. All right, that, that's a good start for your plays. We'll have more. We'll sprinkle them in throughout right. the show. Kelly, NBA, 6 Eastern. Our next game's up here on the docket. By the way, Buck Clipper's off to a very fast start, so I'm glad I didn't try to just go with the auto hangover first half under bet there. Because whenever you have Pat Bev, Bobby Portis, and uh, you know, and uh, and other players of that ilk, yeah. they're going to play hard. And uh, we're and PJ Tucker also is involved on the Clippers side, so re multi multi revenge angles have resulted in a relatively fast start there at Crypto.com Arena, 30 to 26 after a quarter. So they are pacing uh, well, well over at the yeah. I, I, like I said before, I'd, I'd be interested possibly getting in a live under, but the uh, the shooting numbers are not exactly exactly that stellar. Usually when you see a hot a hot start, you like to look at hot shooting. Is it going to regress a little yeah, they're bit? They're going fast. An under, yeah. yeah, but they really just the pace Jeez. is uh, being uh, played up. 33 29 at the end of one and. <laughs> It's funny that total originally opened 227, got bet down five and a half points. Live is 226 and a half. So you're right back to where the original opener came as far as that live number. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. As far as the games later, yeah, I got one. Uh, well, I've got two, uh, a few plays here, but they're all wrapped around one team. I'm on the Pelicans pretty heavy uh, today. Going up against the Hawks. 
uh, the hottest team in the Eastern Conference right now, fellas, the Atlanta <laughs> Hawks, because they've got three straight wins, okay? So I'm going up against the uh, the best of the East. Uh, but this Pelicans team has just been a train here uh, recently going through, uh, I, I mean, playing a lot of these teams really well on this road trip. Toronto, Philadelphia, rolling through the... Uh, through those teams. Hawks' worst ATS, if you haven't been monitoring, uh, in the NBA this year. Again, playing better, even without Trey Young. On no, the, no, they're on playing the better because they don't have Trey Young. Right, exactly. We saw that even with Trey Young out there. Uh, five and five over their last ten. A little above, uh, a little above that zero line net rating. New Orleans, seven and three, though, their last ten. They have been just destroying teams. Plus 11.4 net rating, second best in the NBA over that time. I, I bet them their past three games. I'm sticking with New Orleans today. I bet them first half, one of the best uh, first half teams in the NBA. I bet them full game at when they opened at four and a half. It has gone to six and a half right now. Nice number, yeah. I would probably stay away from that. I also did a money line parlay with them in the Miami Heat. We'll talk about it a little bit. We will. Miami, big favorites, 11 and a half. Washington still has not won a game since the All-Star break. That's the matchup later on today. Back to some more NFL news. We'll discuss that. Update you on the college hoops as well when we come back. At Progressive, we know money can't buy you happiness. But money did help you buy an RV, which means an excuse from working Saturday with your insufferable coworker, Dave. So money is helping you listen to birds chirp instead of Dave chirping about how his toddler is fluent in three languages. And it's also why you'll be smelling pine trees in the air, not Dave's tuna melt reheating in a microwave. So save money by bundling your RV or boat insurance with home or auto from Progressive and buy more happiness or something close to it. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company affiliates and other insurers not available in all states. Tax Talk with Straight Talk. You give and you give. This tax season you get with Straight Talk Wireless. You get a reliable 5G network and unlimited data and a Samsung Galaxy A14 included when you buy an extended silver unlimited plan. So you can give your janky phone to your kid. Yeah! Switch to Straight Talk for plans starting as low as $25 a line per month for four lines. Find us at straighttalk.com. For network management practices, visit straighttalk.com. Device offer ends 41424. Online only. Family plan discount with four lines all on the silver unlimited plan. Taxes and fees apply. If you're looking for an honest take on the NFL from someone who actually worked in front offices, look no further than the GM Shuffle podcast. There's 18 receivers that make over $18 million per year. Do I think all of them are worth it? Absolutely not. Each week, former NFL executive Michael Lombardi and myself, Femi Abebefe, give you two episodes covering every angle of the NFL. He's not a top five or top ten quarterback in the league. You paid him like one. Download the GM Shuffle podcast from VEASAN and DraftKings wherever you get your podcasts. Nobody gets more betting tips and plays than VEASAN Pro subscribers. VEASAN's hosts and guests are professional bettors, and now keeping up with their advice is easier than ever. With pro tips, VEASAN experts give their best insight on air and online every show. And only VEASAN Pro subscribers get them live and can check out our running list on VEASAN.com anytime. Check out the pro tips section of VEASAN.com and get the best of VEASAN in one easy stop. VEASAN, the sports betting network. Life can be full of risks. One thing you shouldn't take a risk with ever is your family's health insurance. If you're self-employed or you now need affordable health insurance, you need to make this free call right now and see how the health insurance helpline can help you get it. We specialize in helping the self-employed and people just like you that need affordable health insurance to get it. We have short and long-term health insurance plans and some even cover dental, vision, and prescription drugs. Don't take a risk with your family's health insurance it's not worth it if you're self-employed or now need affordable health insurance call right now and learn for free how to get it listen affordable health insurance plans for everyone just like you are a free phone call away so give us a shout right now 800-659-7540 800-659-7540 800-659-7540 that's 800-659-7540 if you've ever said something like this, you might need Visa. I'm Moneyline Parlay at all the favorites today. No way any of them lose. It's basically free money from the sports book. Instead of that, why don't you check out VEASAN, the sports betting network. Our betting guides, daily articles, betting tools, and expert picks are designed to help you become a smarter sports better. Become a VEASAN Pro subscriber at VEASAN.com slash subscribe. That's V-S-I-N dot com slash subscribe. Please stand by for this special presentation of the iMedia One Network on the Live 365 Network and the Live 365 app.
They come from around the world. Get it back into the Youngstown end. Clark in front for Verone and his shot block. Got the rebound. He scores! They come from across the country. Strathman to the rebound. 40 seconds left in the 5 on 3. Strathman, shot, scores! Each path is different, every background diverse, but all arrive with the same goal. Every champion was once a contender. Every professional was once an amateur. They were born to be here. One timer and a save by Aiden Wright. My goodness, he robbed John Mustard on the one time. This moment is theirs. Circle, shot, win made the save. Rebound behind the cage. Elger, across, shot, glove, save, Colin win. The road to the NHL runs through Youngstown. It's time for Youngstown Phantoms Hockey on Western Reserve Radio. Sunday afternoons are hockey afternoons. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, from the Cavelli Center in downtown Youngstown, Ohio. The United States Hockey League is proud to present regular season game number 51 for your Youngstown Phantoms today. They take on the Muskegon Lumberjacks. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Matt Lipsack, the voice of the Youngstown Phantoms. Pleased to be bringing you the action this afternoon on Western Reserve Radio and Flow Hockey. Phantoms and Lumberjacks were in action last night here at the Cavelli Center. Just a little over 16 hours ago, and the Lumberjacks got out of here last night with a 3-2 victory. Phantoms opened the scoring at 9.53 the first with a power play goal from Nathan Lewis. Nate's third goal of the season. Ryan Botterill and Andrew Strathman with the assist. Youngstown led 1-0 at the end of the first. 5.22 into the second. Matt Vagridden tied the game for the Jacks with his 30th goal of the year. Ethan Whitcomb and Sasha Boisvert with the helpers, and we were knotted up at 1. At 12-17, Phantoms took the lead back, a power play goal for Charlie Serrato, his 10th of the season. Adam Patilla and Ryan Botterill with the assist. Muskegon tied it at 2 at 15-18, Cody Kroll. A 4-on-4 four -four goal scored on the breakaway, his 19th goal of the season. Cooper Pearson and Xavier Villa with the assist, and then Muskegon gets the game-winning goal, 2-42 into the third period. Joe Connor, a power play goal, redirecting one behind Colin Wynn, Xavier Villa, and Matt Vay Gridden with the helpers on that one. And Muskegon got out of here with a 3-2 win. Colin Wynn took the loss, stopping 13 out of 16, his first action since February the 16th. Sheik Agazi have got the win. A night after getting pulled, he stopped 26 out of 28. Muskegon power play was 2 for 6. Youngstown power play was 2 for 5. Let's take a listen to last night's post-game interview with Phantoms head coach Ryan Ward. Ryan, your thoughts on the game? Yeah, I thought, uh, I mean, we were dominant the entire game. Um, we made uh, one mistake, four on four, ended up in the back of our net. Um, missed a block on the PK. Same old story. I think uh, like we're not dealing with little children here. Uh, these guys, they live their life like pros, and they want to be pros. And, um, you know, we got to come up with a block shot. And, uh, you know, the first goal was, was a, a bad goal. Um, so just little mistakes keep biting us, and I think, um, you know, but I, I was encouraged by our play five on five. You know, I think we defensively, they didn't have much at all. Um, you know, they didn't score five on five. Um, but I thought, in general, our effort was there. I thought we played hard. Um, you know, it's just one of those things, going through a wobble, and we got to work our way out of it. Uh Ryan, the power play continues its upward trend. What did you think of that special team unit tonight? Yeah, I thought they were good. I thought there were a couple, like, 
you know, we were two for five or whatever, but I, I there were a couple like 10 second power plays, you know, so I, another, you go from last night where there were three penalties and tonight there's 12. It's just so inconsistent with, you know, kind of, and I get it, like every night's different, but it's just hard to, hard to figure out what to, what we're doing. Um, but at the end of the day, I thought our power play was good. Our kill wasn't great. Um, we took a real, real poor penalty. Adam Patillo's penalty was not good. And, um, obviously, shooting the puck out of play kind of rolled on him. So I uh, can't can't take on this one penalties. We got to stay off the penalty kill, and um, you know our power play was fine. But so far, it's gonna be going there. I haven't seen Colin win in three weeks, other than the the first leaky goal. What do you think of his performance? Yeah, I don't think he was tested very much. I thought we played well in front of him. I thought the first goal was. I don't think you can, at the end of the day, like you need that save. So, um, <clears throat> you know, I think uh, he was fine. Not good, not bad. He was fine. Second game in a row, Nate Lewis, a positive influence on the ice for you. What do you think of Nate's game? Yeah, he's good. He's a good player. He's, Nate's doing a great job. Uh, you know, he's great on the bench. He's a leader, uh, plays hard. Um, obviously, that's something we were missing, kind of a big, heavy uh, forward. So, uh, it is what it is, and uh, I thought Louis Louis uh, been a real positive impact for us. Anybody have anything for Coach? Thanks, Ryan. Looking to buy or sell a home? Team Marzo with Next Home Go 30 Realty can help. As a premier real estate team in the Mahoney Valley, we bring a unique and progressive approach to real estate using top listing technology, unique signage, and best practices in mobile and online marketing. Our customer-centric approach provides the best of technology with years of marketing expertise to provide an exceptional buying or selling experience. Call us today at 330-503-2250 so you can move with Marzo. Premier Bank is powered by people. People like our proud and strong and wonderfully one-of-a-kind customers who trust us with their dreams and goals. People like our attentive employees who listen and collaborate to consistently deliver the best customer service in the business. People like those in our community who help us make the places we call home as strong as they can possibly be. People like you, who we look forward to connecting with at yourpremierbank.com. Premier Bank, powered by people. Member FDIC. We now return you to Phantoms Hockey on Western Reserve Radio and the voice of the Phantoms, Matt Lipsack. Welcome back inside the Cavelli Center during the pregame show. Let's take a look at today's scratch report. For the Lumberjacks, you can scratch number one, Bo Lane, number four, Ryan Coring, number six, Miles Gust, and number 24, Benny Barnes. For the Phantoms, you can scratch number nine, Miles Gunty, number 25, Braden Clark, number 39, Brecken Smith, and number 71, Daniel Yenchko. That was today's scratch report. Let's take a look at the starting lineups. We'll begin with the visiting Muskegon Lumberjacks who entered tonight's game with a 31 17, one and one record. Their 64 points put them in second place in the USHL's Eastern Conference. Starting on the left wing out of St. Catharines, Ontario, committed to UConn. Number 11, Ethan Whitcomb. Centering the top line for the Jacks out of Trois Rivières, Quebec. Number nine, Sasha Beauvert. On the right wing out of Holmdel, New Jersey, committed to Harvard. Number 19, Justin Solovey. On defense, out of La Sienne, Lorette, Quebec, committed to Harvard, number 25, Xavier Villa. And out of Stockholm, Sweden, the draft property of the Ottawa Senators, number 55, Philip Nordberg. In net, out of Makachalo, Russia, number 29, Shika Godziev. Godziev enters tonight's game with an 11-6 0 record, a 3.24 goals against average, and a .900 save percentage. Lumberjacks are coached by Parker Burgess, assisted by Evan Trupp, C.J. Cush, and Adam Morrison. And now for the Youngstown Phantoms who enter today's game with a 26-16, 4-4 four record. Their 60 points put them in fourth place in the USHL's Eastern Conference. Starting on the left wing out of Porridge, La Prairie, Manitoba, committed to Wisconsin, number 21, Ryan Botterill. Centering the starting lineup for the Phantoms out of Falston, Maryland, committed to Penn State, number 14, Charlie Serrato. On the right wing out of Chicago, Illinois, committed to Ohio State, number 22, Nate Lewis. On defense out of Raleigh, North Carolina, committed to New Hampshire, number 5, Connor DeHaro and out of Ostrava, Czechia. Committed to Providence College in the draft property of the New York Islanders, number two, Tomas Machu. In net, out of Wake Forest, North Carolina, number 30, Aiden Wright. 
Aiden enters tonight's game with a 7-3-0-2 record, a 2.54 goals against average, and a .904 save percentage. Phantoms are coached in his second season by Ryan Ward. The associate head coach is Andy Contois. They are assisted by Brandon Gotkin and Brandon Dennis. The equipment manager is Stephen Smith, athletic trainer Amber Martinelli. Goaltending coach is Neil Conway. The strength and conditioning coach is Tommy Malloy. Director of skill development is Carl Linden, and the general managers are Jason Deskins and Ryan Kosecki. The officials for tonight's game were selected by the United States Hockey League and are as follows. The referees will be Alexander Borowiak and Luke Stork. The linesmen will be Zach Bennett and Jordan Stachelski. We're going to go ahead and step aside for a timeout when we come back. The National Anthem and starting lives here in the arena. You're listening to the pregame show on West Reserve Radio and Flow Hockey. Veterans, the Mahoning County Veterans Service Commission is here to help you. Whether you served five years ago or 50 years ago, if you are honorably discharged from active military service, you may be eligible for benefits, including Veterans VA benefits, county financial assistance, assisted living benefits, and more. Our friendly and supportive staff is ready to help you. Go to mcveterans.org to see all of the benefits and services offered or call today. The Mahoning County Veterans Service Commission, serving those who have served. This prize is what you could win on the new $5 Wheel of Fortune scratch-off from the Ohio Lottery. There's only one letter missing at the end of B-I-G-M-O-N-E. <clears throat> Why, yes, uh, the answer is big money. $100,000 big money. And if you don't win, you can enter for a chance to attend a Wheel of Fortune live taping where you could... You hear it all the time. Why Youngstown State University? Here's why. Because when it comes to engineering, medicine, sports, business, and the skills you need to take your place in the world, we take a backseat to nobody. Because we're the kind of people who look out for each other. Because we care about you, your success, and our future together. We are Youngstown State University, and now you know why. Feeling dehydrated or sluggish? Did you enjoy your Phantoms game just a little too much? We can help you get back on track and hydrated in record time. With our vitamin-infused IV drips, we'll have you feeling healthy and energized so you can get back to your busy schedule. Whether you want to boost your immune system, increase your energy, or stay healthy through the winter months, we can help. Find us on Facebook or the youngstowndrip.com and book your appointment today. Signature Granite in North Lima is your go-to in the countertop trade. We provide workmanship for both residential and commercial markets. In need of a new look in your kitchen, bathroom, bar, or any other countertop installation? Look no further. Our services include measurements, handcrafted custom fabrication, complete installation, custom edge finishing, and outdoor bars, and much more. For a free estimate, call 330-549-9770 and make your next project a signature. Show off your Youngstown pride by sporting the latest in Phantoms gear. Don't know where to get it? Head over to youngstownphantoms.com and click on the Team Shop link for the latest in jerseys, hats, t-shirts, hoodies, and more. Let everyone know that you're the biggest Phantoms fan around. And be sure to stop by the Dunkin' Donuts Team Shop next time you're at the Cavelli Center. Head to youngstownphantoms.com and visit the Team Shop today. When disaster strikes, you don't have time to waste. You need Crago's Restoration, your trusted partner in restoring your home. From water damage and flood restoration to sewage cleanup, we've got you covered. And that's not all. We also offer pressure washing, mold remediation, and even interior demolition. Certified in flood and sewage damage restoration, we're the experts you can count on. Call Crago's Restoration today at 330-610-4193. 330-610-4193. Crago's Restoration, where your home's recovery begins. Passion, talent, development. NCAA hockey offers all that and its players graduate at a 90% rate. Joe Pavelski. Backhand score! Wow, what a goal! Johnny Gaudreau. Score! And Tori Krupp were stars on campus before the NHL stage. Whether you are a fan or a player, nothing compares to college hockey. Visit collegehockeyinc.com and follow at College Hockey. Champions of the college hockey world! 
At Two Men in a Truck, we know moving is tough, but we make it easy. Whether your move is big or small, we'll make it a smooth one. We're the movers who care, and we'll prove it with our 96% referral rate and courteous professional movers. For your next move, call Two Men in a Truck Youngstown, 330-758-2110. That's 330-758-2110, and go Phantoms! Get a me drink. Get me drain. Drain or sewer problems? Call Get me Drain at 330 758 5031 and get it fixed fast. Call now 330 758 5031. A beautiful rendition of our national anthem by Shawneen Sharmer. Welcome back to the broadcast booth, ladies and gentlemen. The voice of the fans, Matt Lipsack, here with you on Western Reserve Radio and Flow Hockey. And if you're watching the Facebook live stream, got my little man Jonathan here with me today, too, who will not be on the microphone. Phantoms and Lumberjacks for the ninth and final time this season, Muskegon has taken seven of the first eight. Youngstown against Muskegon this year, one, three, one, and two. So Phantoms do have points in four of the first eight games, but only one victory to speak of. So goes without saying, Muskegon has clinched the season series against Youngstown. And right now, Muskegon sits in second place in the East. Green Bay just a point behind him, and Gamblers have a game in hand. But right now, the ninth and final time this season you can roll for initiative. We are underway. Phantoms win the draw. Lewis with a long-distance shot, and Godziev 
Looks like that one might have handcuffed him a little, and that might be the first shot of the season Nathan Lewis hasn't scored on. As Nate for sure scored on his first two shots of the season. Don't know if he had any extra yesterday as he also got his third goal, but just eight seconds into this first period, we're going to have another faceoff. Serato wins the draw. Lewis to the point for Machu. Fed down the wall, but picked off by Muskegon and fed out to center. Whitcomb ahead to Solo. They wax it to the end wall. DeHaro got there first, touch it to Machu. Up the far wall to Serato. Charlie skates into it. Chris crosses past Solove and into the zone. Top of the circle, makes a shot. Blocker save by Godziev. As Serato gets hot, hooked down in the corner. Nothing called, and play continues. Solove chips it into the Youngstown end. Goes off for a change as Machu sends it over to DeHaro. Across for Lewis. Nate delays and carries out the center. Gains the red line, chips it past Klee to the end wall. And Youngstown will go for their first line change of the game. At center, Connor across the ice for Gridden. Has a step in on right. He got the shot away and right made the save. Held the rebound as Tory Pintner and Matt Vay Gridden go hard at each other in the corner. Linesman in to separate them. All taking place under the watchful eye of referee Alexander Borowiak. No penalties off of this one. Nice save there by Aiden Wright. Tested early here, 57 seconds into the first period. First period presented by Price Egan Cooling. They're going to bring the face off to the glove side of Aiden Wright. We're knowledge to take the draw against Klee. Klee won the draw. Back to the grid and shot blocked along the way. Never got in to the blue paint. And Wright just let it slide to the left corner, played out to center by Pittner. Birchall sends it down into the Muskegon zone, but Young got there first, sent it up the far wall. Pinched off by Veronin, couldn't make a pass cleanly, and the Jacks will clear it out to center. Pittner with a pinch, but able to knock Gritton down. Gave him a mitt right to the face, too. Gritton slow to get up, trying to draw a penalty there. Veronin ahead with speed into the zone. Veronin fed it in front, but right behind Ronaldo. Would have loved to have seen Kuzma take a shot there as the Jacks send down the ice. No icing here as Pearson was ahead of the play. Pearson behind the net trying to shove Bumidian. Maybe trying to draw a tripping call too, but neither official having it as Ronaldo clears the puck out to center. Kroll picked it up there, gave it up to Pearson. Slid over to Hendricks. Spins at the right half wall. Up to the point for a shot that is blocked by Sam Ronaldo. Shot came off the stick of Camo Coin as... Burchill gets put down hard, gets back up, grabs the puck, sends it down the ice. Marin hustling down, going to beat out the icing whistle here as he gets ripped down by Cameron O'Coin. Somehow that's not a hold or interference. Play continues. Top of the right circle. Young sent it into the corner. For Marin, pushed down by O'Coin again. And the Jacks will force it up the boards, and they'll bring it ahead. Galanic into the zone, spins the top of the left circle. Probably could have been a trip on Bemidian there as Marin puts Galanic hard into the boards. Officials letting him play so far through the first two minutes and 40 seconds. Strathman around the cage in the near side. Trying to get away from Spitznagel. Spins in front of the bench. Creates some space for himself. Captain still with it. Red line and blue into the zone, chips it to the right wing corner. Rolls behind the cage. Norbrook was the first one there. Sending up the far wall. Line was kept by Patella. He'll fire a slapper. They score! He's having fun looking out for number one, Michael Monroe. Redirects it in for his first goal in the USHL. And Youngstown has a one to nothing lead. Time of the goal. 3-0-1. Monroe, so close to goals each of his first two games, hit a post last night, and here gets the redirect on the full slapper from Patilla. For his first marker in the U show, what a beauty it was. And Youngstown has a one to nothing lead. Phantoms control the draw. Here comes Monroe to the red line, chipped into the zone, off a glove, fed it over toward Rusinski, broken up by Whitcomb. Jacks carry ahead. Whitcomb brought it to the line, sent it to the end wall. Hanrahan tried to throw a reverse check there, pass picked off by Monroe. He gets put down for his trouble, but did get it to Ramos out at center. Ramos 
Couldn't bring it into the zone cleanly. Muskegon will bring it back through the neutral zone. In front of the benches, it's Toll, but he put it into the Phantoms bench for a puck out of play. 6.19 left in the first period. Phantoms lead 1-0 on the goal by Michael Monroe. Shots on goal are 3-1 in favor of Youngstown. Phantoms win the neutral zone draw, and in the zone came Botterill. Couldn't pull the trigger on a shot, gets put hard into the wall by Gritton, and then the loose puck out to center as Machu runs Joe Connor over. DeHaro to Lewis, fed back down low. DeHaro touched it toward the line! It's in! Shiga Gazia fooled by the redirect of Connor DeHaro, and Youngstown leads two to nothing. Time of the goal. 4-0-1 for DeHaro, his second goal of the season. Driving my tractor to the prom. What a look by DeHaro as it was loose on his pads and his gods, he just couldn't find it. And as he spun, he kicked it into the net. Youngstown wins the draw. Penalty upcoming on the play, interference call. I believe on the Youngstown Phantoms. We'll see who the guilty party is. Heading to the box, Ryan Botterill. Dave Ferris tells me he's not impressed with the call. I haven't gotten to see it yet, but given what they've let go already so far, Okay, yeah, he didn't do anything. That's okay. Shot from center point, blockered away by right rebound. Hustled over by Burchill, but he couldn't clear. Kept by Boisvert. Whitcomb to Young, back to Whitcomb, top of the right circle. Shot blocked in front by Osborne. That one hit him in the boot, stung him a little as Machu plays it high off the window and down to center. Boisvert into the zone, bumped by Osborne, puck behind the net. Machu sends it back over to Osborne, and Luke will clear it down the ice. Godziev chipped it over to his men. Rusinski almost picked it off. As the, as the Jacks bring it out to center, it's Gridden. Into the zone, shot blocked away by Pittner. Rebound to Haro up the near wall. Whitcomb kept it. Got it to Boisvert. Rolled off his twig to Villa, to Whitcomb, to Boisvert. Shot scored. Sasha Boisvert, his 100th point in the USHL, is a power play goal. And Muskegon is on the board. They trail 2-1, to one time of the goal, 5:09. As a literal phantom penalty where I could not see that Ryan Botterill did anything wrong at all, ends up in the back of the phantom's net. Right seemed like he got a lot of that shot or it hit something right in front. It seemed to kind of change directions as it went into the net. But for Boisvert, that'll be goal number 30 on the season. And again, the 100th point in his USHL career as the Jacks won the draw, but pass across looking for Bauer Barry down into the Muskegon defensive zone. Barry hustled back for it, played it back out to center as Hendricks had to duck around the check of Charlie Serrato. And now Serrato will receive the stretch pass. Spun around Barry, backhander toward the cage. Godsy have kicked it free. Rebound loose at the side of the net, picked up by Kroll. Kroll out to center. Man ripped down in front of the bench. There was Pearson as the puck rolled to Wilson. D to D over to Hanrahan in their own zone. Back to Wilson, center of the ice. Up at center for Monroe, bumped off the puck as it rolls to Dahlheimer. Surround to the corner, now off of Hendricks, out to center. Hanrahan picks it up and sends it right back into the Muskegon zone. Around to Toll on the left half wall. Rusinski bumped him as he sent it around to a coin, and then Hendricks cleared up the middle, but broken up by Monroe as he gets leveled by Dahlheimer. Penalty upcoming on that one. Interference to call on that one, too, and we'll have immediate timeout. 13.45 left in the first. Phantoms lead 2-1. to one. You're listening to Youngstown Phantoms Hockey on West Reserve Radio and Flow Sports. 
At Two Men in a Truck, we know moving is tough, but we make it easy. Whether your move is big or small, we'll make it a smooth one. We're the movers you care, and we'll prove it with our 96% referral rate and courteous professional movers. For your next move, call Two Men in a Truck Youngstown, 330-758-2110. That's 330-758-2110, and go Phantoms! We now return you to Phantoms Hockey on Western Reserve Radio and the voice of the Phantoms, Matt Lipsack. Phantoms heading to their first power play of the game on the season, 18.7%, 11th in the league. Kill for Muskegon, 74.8%, 13th in the league. Power play for the Phantoms against Muskegon this year. 4 for 23, which is 17.4%, which I actually don't think is right. As Youngstown wins the draw, but Grinton strips the man of the puck and lifts it out to center. Thirteen and a half left in the first. Phantoms lead two to one. Dahlheimer in the box for allegedly an interference call. An interesting definition of the rule to be sure is Serato sends it into the right wing corner. Via bumped it off the puck. Serato got it back. Feeds it up to the point for Strathman. Strat over to the circle for Young. Skate to stick. Watched by Grinton into the circle for Serato, back to Young, and now Strathman at the point. Strat eyed the net, sends it over to Botterill. Back to Serato in the box. Charlie swinging wide, gives it up to Botterill. Side of the net, Patilla in front for Serato, whacking at it, whacking at it, and then forced behind the cage. In front comes the Botterill, shot blocked. Grinton going to get to the rebound on the half wall and clear it down the ice. Dangerous moments down in front for the Lumberjacks. Phantoms unable to capitalize halfway home on the power play. Second power play unit cycling on for Youngstown as Strathman ducks around Connor. Into the zone he comes. Forced to the left side. Chips it behind the cage. First one to it is Barry. He's going to slap it around the boards and down the ice. Bamidian back for it. Checks over his shoulder. Sees Joe Connor coming on the forecheck. Sasha leaves it for Osborne. Back to Sasha. Cross to the line. For Lewis, stick handling, top of the right circle, back to the point for Osborne. Luke skates into the top of the circles, feeds it over to Marin. In front, Lewis, redirect, went wide. Came over to Bamidian. Bounced it across to Burchill. Mikey in the box for Marin, behind him, looking for Bamidian, poked out the center by the Jacks. Hustling back for it was Osborne to deny Kroll of the break. Thought Connor was offside there as he gets the steal. Sharp angle shot off the side of the net and out of the box comes Dahlheimer. Phantoms power play 0 for 1. Muskegon power play is 1 for 1. Burchill lost his footing coming into the zone and the puck rolled 2 via. Stops it behind the cage and then fires it out to center. 2 on 1 maybe here for the Jacks. Down the left side comes Whitcomb. Shot right made the save. Rebound poked to the corner by Hunter Ramos. Around to the left side the rebound goes. Machu out to center for Burchill. Lifts it ahead softly looking for Ramos. Hunter got to the right corner first trying to spin away from O'Coin now. Hunter. Up to the point for Deharo. Connor, D to D, to Machu. Eyes the net, got the shot away. Godziev made the save and jumped on the rebound. We should be having our media timeout. Nope, okay. 11.03 left in the first. Shots on goal are 7 to 3. Youngstown with the 2 to 1 lead. Right now, the go ahead goal belongs to Connor Deharo who just put one into the blue paint, and Godziev had the worst time finding it and then ended up kicking it into the cage. Sometimes you have to wonder if with a black jersey, sometimes goalies just lose the puck and can't find it. Faceoff will be to the left of Godziev. Rusinski to take the draw. Faceoff warning on Muskegon. I believe that's Bolvaire to take the draw. Still loose in the circle. Jax tried to play it ahead, but it's picked off by Monroe, who got the opening goal here this afternoon. Rusinski fed it in front. Bounced off of Gaziev Rue, then couldn't put the rebound anywhere as the Jax will clear it down the ice. Bouncing puck, no icing here as Machu has to play it away from Solovey. Machu from below his own goal line. Over to Deharo, carrying ahead with speed. Red line, and now blue into the zone. 
DeHaro played it through a man skates. Ramos kept it in the zone. Came to Monroe. Shot just missed the cage. Off the end wall, Solove couldn't clear. Monroe held the zone. Played it down low, but the Phantoms are changing, and the Jacks will start to carry ahead. Whitcomb. Dropped it back for Villa. Played ahead by Solovey, but picked off by Birchall. Fed over to Ronaldo. Sam, behind the net, tried to get it to Veronin, but he was tied up by O'Coin. Now comes a Birchall, shot was blocked, and trickled into Godziev, he'll cover. As Ronaldo and Veronin exchanged some pleasantries with the Muskegon defense, 10-0-3. Left in the first, Youngstown with the two to one lead. Face off will be to the left of Godziev. It'll be Ronaldo to take the draw against Galanic. Ronaldo won it four, got to Veronin, walking his way to the net. He got hooked down, but play continues. Jax cleared it to the line, just past the outstretched stick of Mikey Burchill. Picking up in his own zone is Wilson. Over to Hanrahan and sent ahead, looking for Veronin. Rolls into the right wing corner, tolls the first one there. Able to work it over to Young, and now up the wall, near side to Pearson. To the line, kept by Ronaldo, fed to Veronin. To Ronaldo, to Burchill's shot! Just high of the cage, maybe a blocker save there by Godziev. Wasn't sure if he got a piece of it or not, but Birchie had some net to work with on the far side as Hanrahan throws a check, kept in the zone by Patilla. Patilla, centering feed, shot, scores! Boom, shaka laka laka boom. Kuzma Veronin puts it to the back of the cage. His ninth goal of the season, and Youngstown leads three to one. Time of the goal, 10.39. Absolutely beautiful feed by Adam Patilla after he held the zone. Just outstanding work by Patilla. Great vision and Veronin knew what to do with it. As Youngstown wins the draw. Pittner D to D over to Osborne. Sent into the zone behind the cage. Godziev stops it up, tries to send it up the far side. Going to find a man at the top of the circle. That's Connor. Across the ice looking for Gritton. He will bring it into the zone. Chipped into the circle. Young took it away, and he'll bring it ahead. Looking for Marin, just a little out of his reach. And he'll roll to Norberg. He'll play it over to Via. Out to center. Taken there by Osborne. Sent right back into the Muskegon zone. Godziev stops it up for Via. Muskegon defense able to get the clear. Comes to Connor at center. Chipped ahead looking for Klee. He'll bring it into the Youngstown end. Tried to play it away from Young. Pass broken up by Osborne. Kept at the point by Klee. Shot, stick save, Aiden Wright. Connor up the wall. Gritton shot over the shoulder of Wright into the end glass. Barry pinching in to keep the play alive. Left corner, Klee behind the cage. It's Gritton. Spinning, looking. Fed it up the wall past Klee. He'll gather into the half wall. Up to the point. Shot toward the cage that is swallowed up and held by Aiden Wright, and we will have our media timeout. 8-11 left in the first. Youngstown leads 3-1. You're listening to Youngstown Phantoms Hockey on West Reserve Radio and Flow Sports. When disaster strikes, you don't have time to waste. You need Crago's Restoration, your trusted partner in restoring your home. From water damage and flood restoration to sewage cleanup, we've got you covered. And that's not all. We also offer pressure washing, mold remediation, and even interior demolition. Certified in flood and sewage damage restoration, we're the experts you can count on. Call Crago's Restoration today at 330-610-4193. 330-610-4193. Crago's Restoration, where your home's recovery begins. Welcome back to Western Reserve Radio's coverage of the Youngstown Phantoms. Now here's the voice of the Phantoms, Matt Lipsack. Welcome back inside the Cavelli Center. 8-11 left in the first. Youngstown leads 3-1. Most recent goal belongs to Kuzma Veronin. Youngstown leads on the shot counter 11-3 as Muskegon for the second night in a row in the first period, just unable to do anything at all so far, five on five. 
That was something that Ryan Ward brought up last night in his press conference that Muskegon scored three goals. One was a four-on-four -four goal. The other two were both power plays. Muskegon's goal here tonight on the power play. Just not generating anything five-on-five -five like they did on Friday night. Serato to take the draw against Galanic. Serato wins the draw. Strathman had his stick lifted. to Galenic. Couldn't get it on the net, though. Came back to Strathman behind the cage. Fed it to Botterill. Snapped ahead. Going to roll to Bamidian to the line to Serato. Behind him. Lewis just under his stick. Came to Botterill. Back to the point for Bamidian. Sasha toward the cage. Right to the glove of Godziev. And he'll hang on. As a few cross checks are exchanged there. Nate Lewis and Jack Galanic. Faceoff will be to the left of Sheikha Gaziev, who has stopped eight out of 11. Serato to take the draw this time against Bovair as Muskegon went for the line change. Parker Burgess seems to like this top versus top matchup. As Serato wins the draw, Lewis toward the cage. Serato hammering at it. Butterill scores! Ryan Barrow from the doorstep puts it behind Godziev and Youngstown leads four to one. Time of the goal, 12-11. You do not know the power of the dark side and we're calling the bullpen. Onto the ice comes Miles Roberts. Sheikha Godziev night is done. After 12 minutes and 11 seconds, he stopped eight out of 12. Roberts on the season. Four and one with a 405 goals against and an 863 save percentage. Muskegon wins the draw, right sends it around the boards after the dump in. Found Monroe, he's bumped off the puck as Solove trying to work his way down in the corner. He'll get there, feed it up to the point for Young. His shot well wide of the cage. Bovere side of the net, tried to spin it in front. Blocked away by right, rebound cleared out the center by Machu. Dumped right back in by the Jacks. Wright sets it up, gets it to DeHaro. Connor has to spin away from Whitcomb. But Cooley able to get it out to the neutral zone. Slides back down into the Muskegon end. Back into the zone, come the Jacks. Bolvera, shot, glove save, Aiden Wright. Crowd gathers in front of the blue paint for Absolutely no reason, there's no traffic when Wright made the save. 7.06 left in the first. Phantoms lead four to one. Goals belonging to Michael Monroe, Connor DeHaro, Kuzma Veronin, and Ryan Bottero. Muskegon goal scored by Sasha Bovera on the power play, good for his 100th point in the USHL. I know if you go to ushl.com, it's going to say 99 right now, but I have been assured several times by Ezra Janello that Bovera is missing an assist from Friday night and that he does indeed have 100 points. As Muskegon wins the draw, Gridden, as actually Ms. Youngstown's on the power or penalty kill now. Cross-checking the call on Machu is here. The fans are coming ahead with a 2 on 0 Burchill, Serato, 2 on 1 now. Burchill shot, got, or Roberts swallows it up and hangs on. Great job by Joe Connor to hustle back and turn a 2 on 0 into a 2 on 1. 17 seconds gone on the Adams Street Preservation penalty kill. Serato won the draw, but Muskegon gets control. Bovere feeds it behind the cage to Young. Back to Bovere, near side, runs into Serato and lost the puck. So Whitcomb will drop it back to Bovere. Across now for Gridden. To the red line. Now to Connor, and he'll send it to the left wing corner. First one there, however, is Osborne. He fanned on his clearing attempt. Gridden to Young, his shot. Out of play. Didn't hear a whistle, but I did see the puck hit the meshing and everybody reacting like the whistle was blown. 
I'm sure my son will tell you I probably need to get my hearing checked. What do you think, buddy? Yes, yes? okay. Sure my wa I'm sure my wife Amanda would probably agree my hearing does need checked. Face off to the glove side of Aiden Wright Ronaldo to take the draw against Klee. Phantoms win it forward and get it down the ice. Back for it is via as the second power play unit is on for Muskegon. 105 left in the Adams Free Preservation penalty kill. Kroll to Solove, back to Kroll. Around the kick plate over to Hendricks. And now back around the wall to the near side looking for Solove. Wilson couldn't get a stick on it, played to the point for Villa. Eyes the cage, now over to Hendricks. Left circle, shot, and a save by Aiden Wright. He swallowed that one up. 46 seconds left in the Adams Tree Preservation penalty kill. Young's down to the line change. Face off blocker side on Aiden Wright. Second power play unit gonna stay out for Muskegon as Young wins the draw, bumps it over to Osborne. Luke pitchforks it up the wall, kept at the line by Villa, sent back down into the corner. Klee, pass broken up by Osborne, came back to him, he'll shovel it up the wall to Hendricks, now the point for Villa. Top of the right circle for Kroll. Walks the blue line, sends it to the right half wall for Solovey. Back to the point for Villa. Left circle, Hendricks into the box for Kroll. His shot blocked, rebound came over to Solvay, trickled in on right, played away by Youngstown, kept at the top of the circle by Villa. 15 seconds left in the power play. Villa, far side, across, Solovey, shot score. Justin Solovey, his 19th goal of the season. We're just nine seconds left on the power play, but a couple of failed clears there by Youngstown. Allowed Muskegon to keep it in the zone. Another power play goal for Muskegon. I think they now have six on the weekend. And on the season, they are nine for 26 against Youngstown. You know, it's almost like they, it's almost like I emailed last night's game notes. Off the restart. We're in the Youngstown zone. Up the wall, Spitznagel in the corner, tried to center. Taken away in the corner by Bamidi and couldn't send it around the wall. Galanic blocked it. Gonna roll to Strathman. Snaps it head off the stick of Monroe out to center. O'Coin tries to play it back to the line. Rusinski battling for it in front of his own bench against Galanic and Pearson. Pearson worked it free. Does squeak into the zone, but right to the stick of Strathman. Over to Bemidian. and he'll play it out to center, but bumped right back ahead by the Jacks. Spitznagel spun it to the middle, broken up by Strathman. It bounces to Ramos. Hunter ahead, took a punch to the face by O'Coin. Nothing called, play continues. Spitznagel throws it to the left wing corner. Rusinski settles things down as the Jacks are going for a line change. Up to center for Lewis. Nate inside out. Couldn't get back to the puck as Young played it over to the far wall. Botterill battling for it there. He has the Phantoms' most recent goal. Up to the point. Hanrahan shot. Lewis redirected went right. Toronto the rebound ripped it wide of the net. Rebound played out to center by Connor. Hustling back for it is Wilson. Jack, his pass is blocked, got it to Klee, then Gritton back across to Klee, right, in position. Klee trying to make a move, forced down low by Wilson. Great recovery by the Phantoms defense after the turnover. Klee, battling against Wilson still. Serato pitchforked it free, got it to Lewis, and now out to center for Botterill. Was in his skates, Connor poked it free, but it came to Lewis, and hand pass called it center on Youngstown. 334 left in the first. as I believe that's Jake Toll. He's to be separated from Colson Hanrahan. And then takes a cross check from Justin Solove.
Would love to see our officials get control of the game or this is going to go south really quick. It's off the hand pass. They're going to drop the puck right at center. Ronaldo wins it forward, lost his footing, played it into the zone. Veronin tussling back for it, but a diving Norberg plays it to the right corner. Birchall swept it in front, popped up in the air, fed in front by Veronin, but picked off by the Jacks. Whitcomb out to center. Found Bouvier into the zone, spins away from DeHaro, feeds it down low. Solovey there. Over to the far corner. Whitcomb got there first, wrapped up by Machu. Down the wall, Solovey. Throws a hit on DeHaro, but the puck came free for Birchall. Mikey skates it ahead. Mikey to the red line, had back checked away by Whitcomb. Played to the line, Ronaldo looking for it, couldn't hold the zone. As Solovey plays it back down low to Villa. Carries around the cage to the near side, sends it over to Nordberg, and then reverses back to Villa. 2.47 left in the first. Youngstown leads 4-2. A high event. First period. Muskegon 2-2 two two on the power play. I believe Youngstown is 0-for-1 as icing called on the Youngstown Phantoms. 2.32 left in the first faceoff down into the Youngstown defensive zone. As bodies coming together off the icing whistle and somebody's going to the penalty box off this one. I see Nate Lewis there in the scrum. His helmet's been ripped off. Looks like Nate's going to be one of the ones going to the box. Actually, they may just send him to the locker room. They may send both of them to the locker room. 2.32 left in the first if they both get misconducts. They've got Nate Lewis halfway to the locker room now. Like, wait, do I go to the locker room? Am I getting two? Am I getting ten? What's going on? Okay, Nate Lewis is going to the locker room, as is Justin Solovey. As Luke Stork and Alexander Borowiak talk things over with Strathman and Kroll at the edge of the officials' crease. 2.32 left in the first. As one of our linesmen brings Nate Lewis's helmet over to Stephen Smith, Phantom's equipment manager. Also have to thank Smitty for gluing back together Jonathan's iPad case. Broke on our drive over. Lynn Siegford tells me two for roughing and a 10 minute misconduct both for Nathan Lewis and Justin Solvay. So the action will stay at five on five. And after the icing whistle, they're going to bring the faceoff down into the Youngstown zone. Draw will be to the right side of Aiden Wright, who sporting an all-white bucket. Don't think I saw that from him the other night. As Young wins the draw cleanly, Pittner to Osborne. Around the wall to Marin. Behind him to Young, touched out to center for Patilla. Balancing puck, knocked forward by Pittner, and then Patilla clubs it into the Muskegon zone. But the first one to it is Danny Clares. Touched up the wall, kept at the point by Osborne. Luke walks the line. Luke still with it. Defenseman in the right corner. Trades it off to Marin as he just gets shoved down. Two on one developing. Down the side comes Pearson. Fed across now center for Crowley. Scores. Beautiful passing by the Jacks as a three on one developed. And Cody Kroll gets his second goal of the weekend. Goal number 20 on the season and the Jacks are back within a goal. It's four to three. Time of the goal, 18.01. As just nothing Aiden Wright's gonna do on that one. He had the two on one de defended, but then it became a three on one as Kroll joined the rush. He had a wide open net to tap it into. Jacks control the draw. Gritton to Klee. Wedged off by Serrato. Strathman comes away with the puck. Carries behind the net. Sends it around to Bamidian. Sasha 
couldn't clear. Gridden fanned on the shot. Serrano knocked it away as it comes to Veronin. Kuzma fed it ahead, but touched away from Bottero. Fans are going to have to break off the rush as Bottero went offside. Veronin swept it into the zone, but that was right to the stick of Nordberg. Over to Villa, then out to center for Gridden. Ahead to the line for Connor. Connor shot off the tip of the glove of right, and it went wide. Nordberg behind him to Gridden to Connor, his shot blocked by a sliding Strathman. Now Connor tries to feed it in front, broken up by Strathman and Veronin, and Kuzma carries a head, chipped it to Serrato, carries to the red line, and dumps it into the zone. Godziev, a little bit of a misplay here, as so it's picked off by the Phantoms, but a centering feed by Bottero as he was looking for an oncoming Ramos, picked off by the Jacks and sent out to center. Connor knocks it ahead into the Youngstown end as we are inside a minute to play in the first. Seven goals here in the first period. Youngstown led 4-1. to one. They now lead 4-3. to three. Hanrahan into the Muskegon zone. Stopped at the half wall. Coming into support is Rusinski. Spins away from a coin in the corner. Rusinski still with it. Up the wall to Ramos. Back to Rusinski. Couldn't feed it down the walls. He took a check. Puck loose along that, that far wall. Hanrahan. Flicked it toward the cage, going to come to Monroe. Sharp angle shot, missed the cage. Comes to the far side and played down the ice by Muskegon. Dies just inside the Phantoms line. Hanrahan, D to D over Wilson. 15 seconds left in the frame. Ramos into the zone, but lost it as Monroe tried to enter his goal. And it gets blown up by Hanrahan, and he's going to get called for a board as Bovere drops it back to center. And the period may end here without... Youngstown sending that man to the box as it's chipped to the line by Nordberg, who takes a slash at the ankle of Rusinski at the buzzer. Youngstown will be on the penalty kill, but here at the end of 20, the Phantoms lead 4-3. Shots on goal in the first period, 14-8 in favor of Youngstown. We're going to go ahead and step aside for a timeout. When we come back, the, second inter the first intermission report here for you on West Reserve Radio and Flow Hockey. The Mahoning Valley's leader for golf, Milk Creek Golf Course, is now booking tee times for 2024. We offer stay and play opportunities available with nine area hotel partners. For more information, visit our website at millcreekmetroparks.org. Also, look for new exciting opportunities coming soon, including an indoor player development center with Trackman, an indoor Callaway club fitting center, and an Odyssey fitting studio in 2024. Follow us on Facebook at Milk Creek Golf Course or call 330-740-7112. At Two Men in a Truck, we know moving is tough, but we make it easy. Whether your move is big or small, we'll make it a smooth one. We're the movers who care, and we'll prove it with our 96% referral rate and courteous professional movers. For your next move, call Two Men in a Truck, Youngstown, 330-758-2110. That's 330-758-2110, and go Phantoms! Passion. Talent. Development. NCAA hockey offers all that and its players graduate at a 90% rate. Joe Pavelski. Backhand scores! Wow, what a goal! Johnny Gaudreau. And Tori Krupp were stars on campus before the NHL stage. Whether you are a fan or a player, nothing compares to college hockey. Visit collegehockeyinc.com and follow at College Hockey. Champions of the college hockey world! When disaster strikes, you don't have time to waste. You need Crago's Restoration, your trusted partner in restoring your home. From water damage and flood restoration to sewage cleanup, we've got you covered. And that's not all. We also offer pressure washing, mold remediation, and even interior demolition. Certified in flood and sewage damage restoration, we're the experts you can count on. Call Crago's Restoration today at 330-610-4193. 330-610-4193. Crago's Restoration, where your home's recovery begins. The Doubletree by Hilton Youngstown Downtown is proud to be the official hotel partner of the Youngstown Phantoms. Located in downtown's historical standby building and fully updated with today's amenities while preserving its historical charm and neoclassical architecture of 1907. Offering modern conveniences such as on-site room service, free Wi-Fi, complimentary business center, and a 24-hour fitness center. Events are also memorable with over 5,000 square feet of meeting space, including our top floor ballroom accented by 13-foot ceilings, Palladian windows, and views from 12 stories up. Conveniently located within walking distance to the Cavelli Center, the Youngstown Foundation Amphitheater, Youngstown State University, Oh Wow Science Center, and Dior Performing Arts Center, 
The Double Tree by Hilton Youngstown Downtown is a proud partner of the Youngstown Phantoms and invites you to be our valued guest. Get a me drink. Get a me drain. Drain or sewer problems? Call Get a me drain at 330 758 5031 and get it fixed fast. Call now 330 758 5031. Just like the Phantoms, HBK, CPAs, and consultants know every successful team needs a winning game plan. Count on the professionals at HBK, CPAs, and consultants, HBK's wealth advisors, and HBK valuation and litigation support for all of your personal and business tax, audit, assurance, financial planning, business consulting, and wealth management needs. For more than 65 years, the HBK family of firms have been advising thousands of clients on how to grow and protect their wealth. Contact them today so they can help you and your team do the same. Call 758-8613 or visit hbkcpa.com to learn how. We now return you to Phantoms Hockey on Western Reserve Radio and the voice of the Phantoms, Matt Lipsack. Welcome back inside the Cavelli Center for the first intermission report. At the end of 20 minutes of play, the Youngstown Phantoms lead the Muskegon Lumberjacks 4-3. What has been a very high event. First period, shots on goal from the first 14-8 in favor of Youngstown. Phantoms scored just 3-0-1 into the game. Michael Monroe with the redirect. Adam Patilla with the assist. First goal in the USHL for Michael Monroe. I think we're, we might see an assist for Andrew Strathman on that one as well. Phantoms double the lead at 4-0-1. Connor DeHaro with the redirect. Nathan Lewis with the assist. I think we might see an assist for Tomas Machu on that one as well. Youngstown led 2-0. The 509 mark, Sasha Bavair got his 30th goal of the season, which was also his 100th point in the USHL. Ethan Whitcomb and Joe Connor with the assist on the power play goal. Phantoms opened up the two-goal lead again. Kuzma Veronin, his ninth of the season. That came at 10:39. Patilla and Sam Ranallo with the helpers on that one. Phantoms made it 4-1 to one on a goal with, from Ryan Botterill, his 22nd of the season. That came at 12:11. Charlie Serrato and Nathan Lewis, Lewis with the assist as Botterill now takes over the team lead in goal scoring. At 14.47, Justin Solove, a power play goal for Muskegon. Assist to Xavier Villa. And then at 18.01, Cody Kroll finishes on the three-on-one. His 20th goal of the season. Ty Hendricks and Cooper Pearson with the assists. And that's how we got to our three, to, or sorry, four to three score. Shiga Godziev started for Muskegon and was pulled after the fourth goal. Right now the score sheet says he stopped 10 out of 14, which I don't think is correct. When, when Godziev left the net, the shot counter on the big board said 12. So this might be Godziev stopped 8 out of 12, and Roberts has stopped 2 out of 2. Aiden Wright has stopped 5 out of 8. Muskegon power play is 2 for 2, and they will be starting the second period on the power play as Colson Hanrahan was called for, I believe, boarding right there at the 20-minute mark. Hit occurred... At about 1950, but Youngstown did not touch the puck before the end of the period. Phantom power play is 0 for 1. We're going to go ahead and step aside for a timeout. When we come back, we'll take a look at the out-of-town scoreboard here for in West Reserve Radio and Flow Hockey. Looking to buy or sell a home? Team Marzo with Next Home Go 30 Realty can help. As a premier real estate team in the Mahoney Valley, we bring a unique and progressive approach to real estate using top listing technology, unique signage, and best practices in mobile and online marketing. Our customer-centric approach combines the best of technology with years of marketing expertise to provide an exceptional buying or selling experience. Call us today at 330-503-2250 so you can move with Marzo. Premier Bank is powered by people. People like our proud and strong and wonderfully one-of-a-kind customers who trust us with their dreams and goals. People like our attentive employees who listen and collaborate to consistently deliver the best customer service in the business. People like those in our community who help us make the places we call home as strong as they can possibly be. People like you who we look forward to connecting with at yourpremierbank.com. Premier Bank, powered by people. 
Member FDIC. Signature Granite in North Lima is your go-to in the countertop tray. We provide workmanship for both residential and commercial markets. In need of a new look in your kitchen, bathroom, bar, or any other countertop installation? Look no further. Our services include measurements, handcrafted custom fabrication, complete installation, custom edge finishing, and outdoor bars, and much more. For a free estimate, call 330-549-9770 and make your next project a signature. Veterans, the Mahoning County Veterans Service Commission is here to help you. Whether you served five years ago or 50 years ago, if you are honorably discharged from active military service, you may be eligible for benefits, including Veterans VA benefits, county financial assistance, assisted living benefits, and more. Our friendly and supportive staff is ready to help you. Go to mcveterans.org to see all of the benefits and services offered or call today. The Mahoning County Veterans Service Commission, serving those who have served. This prize is what you could win on the new $5 Wheel of Fortune scratch-off from the Ohio Lottery. There's only one letter missing at the end of B-I-G-M-O-N-E. <clears throat> Why, yes, uh, the answer is big money. $100,000 big money. And if you don't win, you can enter for a chance to attend a Wheel of Fortune live taping where you could win more big prizes. Lottery players are subject to Ohio laws and commission regulations. Play responsibly. Wheel of Fortune is a trademark of Califon Productions. Feeling dehydrated or sluggish? Did you enjoy your Phantoms game just a little too much? We can help you get back on track and hydrated in record time. With our vitamin-infused IV drips, we'll have you feeling healthy and energized so you can get back to your busy schedule. Whether you want to boost your immune system, increase your energy, or stay healthy through the winter months, we can help. Find us on Facebook or theyoungstowndrip.com and book your appointment today. You hear it all the time. Why Youngstown State University? Here's why. Because when it comes to engineering, medicine, sports, business, and the skills you need to take your place in the world, we take a backseat to nobody. Because we're the kind of people who look out for each other. Because we care about you, your success, and our future together. We are Youngstown State University, and now you know why. Show off your Youngstown pride by sporting the latest in Phantoms gear. Don't know where to get it? Head over to youngstownphantoms.com and click on the Team Shop link for the latest in jerseys, hats, t-shirts, hoodies, and more. Let everyone know that you're the biggest Phantoms fan around. And be sure to stop by the Dunkin' Donuts Team Shop next time you're at the Cavelli Center. Head to youngstownphantoms.com and visit the Team Shop today. Welcome back to Western Reserve Radio's coverage of the Youngstown Phantoms. Now here's the voice of the Phantoms, Matt Lipsack. Welcome back inside the Cavelli Center. First intermission report. Phantoms lead Muskegon 4-3. Let's take a look at the out-of-town scoreboard. Just one other game in the USHL this afternoon. Team USA, the U-17s are taking on the Chicago Steel. And the U-17s have a 2-0 lead at the end of the first period. Over to the NHL earlier this afternoon, the Oilers shut out the Penguins four to nothing. One game going on right now, the Nashville Predators and the Minnesota Wild are tied at one goal apiece. Getting underway in about 10 minutes, the Flames will be in Carolina to take on the Hurricanes. Six o'clock start in Chicago between the Coyotes and Blackhawks. And then an 8 p.m. start out on the West Coast between the Islanders and the Anaheim Ducks. Two games in college hockey today as game three of a couple of quarterfinal series. Winner goes on, loser, your season's done. Lake Superior State and St. Thomas after the Tommies got the win last night. And then Wisconsin, number seven team in the country, forced to a game three against Ohio State who only won three games in the Big Ten regular season this year. Ohio State pushing them to the brink of elimination. Of course, former Phantoms, Matt Cassidy, John Larkin, Dalton Messina, all on that Ohio State squad. And the Wisconsin squad features Will Whitelaw. Get you some of the college hockey scores from last night. See who went on and who went home. Holy, Holy Cross, double overtime winners over Canisius to extend their season. RIT knocked off Robert Morris 5-1. Top seed in the Atlantic Hockey Conference will lead 
on into the semifinals. Niagara down Sacred Heart 5-1 to one to win that series. AIC overtime winners over Air Force 3-2 to two to extend their season. Michigan Tech ended the season for Bowling Green with a 6-5 to five win. Bemidji State shut out Ferris State. Matias Scholl in net for the Beavers. Minnesota State 6-1 to one over Northern Michigan. They won that quarterfinal series 2 to nothing. ECAC Tournament Union 6-0 winners over Brown. RPI 3-2 over Clarkson. And in the Big Ten Tournament, Minnesota ended Penn State season with a 3-2 win. And Michigan knocked off Notre Dame 4-3. That'll do it for the Out of Town Scoreboard and our first intermission report. We're going to go ahead and step aside for a timeout. When we come back, second period action. Phantoms will be on the Adams Street Preservation Penalty Kill here on Western Reserve Radio and Flow Hockey. The Mahoning Valley's leader for golf, Milk Creek Golf Course, is now booking tee times for 2024. We offer stay and play opportunities available with nine area hotel partners. For more information, visit our website at millcreekmetroparks.org. Also, look for new exciting opportunities coming soon, including an indoor player development center with Trackman, an indoor Callaway club fitting center, and an Odyssey fitting studio in 2024. Follow us on Facebook at Milk Creek Golf Course or call 330-740-7112. Passion, talent, development. NCAA hockey offers all that and its players graduate at a 90% rate. Joe Pavelski. Backhand scores! Wow, what a goal! Johnny Gaudreau. Score! And Tori Krupp were stars on campus before the NHL stage. Whether you are a fan or a player, nothing compares to college hockey. Visit collegehockeyinc.com and follow at College Hockey. Champions of the college hockey world! The Double Tree by Hilton Youngstown Downtown is proud to be the official hotel partner of the Youngstown Phantoms. Located in downtown's historical standby building and fully updated with today's amenities while preserving its historical charm and neoclassical architecture of 1907. Offering modern conveniences such as on-site room service, free Wi-Fi, complimentary business center, and a 24-hour fitness center. Events are also memorable with over 5,000 square feet of meeting space, including our top floor ballroom accented by 13 foot ceilings, Palladian windows, and views from 12 stories up. Conveniently located within walking distance to the Cavelli Center, the Youngstown Foundation Amphitheater, Youngstown State University, Oh Wow Science Center, and Dior Performing Arts Center, the Double Tree by Hilton Youngstown Downtown is a proud partner of the Youngstown Phantoms and invites you to be our valued guest. Get a me dream. Get me drain. Drain or sewer problems? Call Get me Drain at 330 758 5031 and get it fixed fast. Call now 330 758 5031. Looking to buy or sell a home? Team Marzo with Next Home Go 30 Realty can help. As a premier real estate team in the Mahoney Valley, we bring a unique and progressive approach to real estate using top listing technology, unique signage, and best practices in mobile and online marketing. Our customer-centric approach provides the best of technology with years of marketing expertise to provide an exceptional buying or selling experience. Call us today at 330-503-2250 so you can move with Marzo. Premier Bank is powered by people. People like our proud and strong and wonderfully one-of-a-kind customers who trust us with their dreams and goals. People like our attentive employees who listen and collaborate to consistently deliver the best customer service in the business. People like those in our community who help us make the places we call home as strong as they can possibly be. People like you who we look forward to connecting with at yourpremierbank.com. Premier Bank, powered by people. Member FDIC. Veterans, the Mahoning County Veterans Service Commission is here to help you. Whether you served five years ago or 50 years ago, if you are honorably discharged from active military service, you may be eligible for benefits, including Veterans VA benefits, county financial assistance, assisted living benefits, and more. Our friendly and supportive staff is ready to help you. Go to mcveterans.org to see all of the benefits and services offered or call today. The Mahoning County Veterans Service Commission, serving those who have served. This prize is what you could win on the new $5 Wheel of Fortune scratch-off from the Ohio Lottery. There's only one letter missing at the end of B-I-G-M-O-N-E. <clears throat> 
<laughs> Why, yes, uh, the answer is big money. $100,000 big money. And if you don't win, you can enter for a chance to attend a Wheel of Fortune live taping where you could win more big prizes. Lottery players are subject to Ohio laws and commission regulations. Play responsibly. Wheel of Fortune is a trademark of Califon Productions. Feeling dehydrated or sluggish? Did you enjoy your Phantoms game just a little too much? We can help you get back on track and hydrated in record time. With our vitamin-infused IV drips, we'll have you feeling healthy and energized so you can get back to your busy schedule. Whether you want to boost your immune system, increase your energy, or stay healthy through the winter months, we can help. Find us on Facebook or theyoungstowndrip.com and book your appointment today. Now return you to Phantoms Hockey on Western Reserve Radio and the voice of the Phantoms, Matt Lipsack. Welcome back inside the Cavelli Center for the start of the second period. Phantoms will be heading to the Adams Street Preservation penalty kill. Colson Hanrahan heading to the box for boarding just before the end of that first period. Looks like it'll be the second power play unit to start for, no, top power play unit. As it looks like Boulevard will take the draw against Birchall to get us started here for the middle frame. You can roll for initiative, second period's underway as Birchall wins the draw and Machu clears it down the length of the ice. Miles Roberts still in the crease for Muskegon. Came on with 7.59 left and here Ronaldo gets a shorthanded steal and didn't have a break so he's just gonna try to feed it back toward Birchall but broken up by the Jacks and sent out to center. Boulevard's pass didn't click as it is forced back by young Birchall leaning on him but couldn't get to the puck as they both go for a tumble. Gritton almost gave it up to Birchall as well. And Mikey spent a lot of energy there in the first 30 seconds. He's going to head off to the bench. Connor into the zone. Fires it around the kick plate, comes to Whitcomb. Being watched by Machu in the left corner. Machu got a piece of it, fed it up the wall, but Gritton stopped it at the line. Now center point for Easton Young. Over to Gritton, top of the left circle. Connor, goal line extended, floated it through, trying to find a man on the back door. I believe that was Beauvert. Pass didn't click. Whitcomb. Crossed the blue line over to Gritton. Skate to stick. Boulevard in the corner. Boulevard up to the top of the circles. Turned and fired. Blocker saved by Aiden Wright. Machu fed the rebound up the wall. Boulevard kept it, but Ronaldo able to chip it down the ice. Sam off to the bench for a change as back for it is Easton Young. 40 seconds left on the Adams Street Preservation penalty kill. Klee into the zone. Chipped it to the end wall. Fired around the boards over to Solove. Stripped of the puck and sent out to center by Grant Young. Picked up by Vius and ahead looking for Hendricks, but picked off at the line by Pittner. Check that Osborne and sent down the length of the sheet. Kroll touches it ahead to Galanik. A crossover to Klee. Chipped to the wall for Hendricks. 10 seconds left in the power play via to Galanik, to Villa, center point, to Henricks. Redirected down low. Phantoms clear it down the ice. Out of the box comes Colson Hanrahan. Youngstown gets their first kill of the game. They're now one for three on the penalty kill as Burchill trying to strip Villa of the puck at center, but he's able to send it over to Kroll. Gets it into the zone. Pittner up the wall, kept by Galanik. Knocked off the puck as it rolls to Ronaldo. Sam fired ahead, came to Pittner. He'll send it out to center for Botterill. Pulls up at the top of the circle, drive back for no one-timer wide of the cage. Roberts was late reacting to that. But Sam missed the net. Now Sam picks it up at the line, gets it to Bamidian. Sasha, shot, Roberts save, rebound to Botterill. Pad save, and it's sent down into the left corner. What a save by Roberts. Botterill tried a couple of moves, but couldn't put it over top of the pad as he did get it elevated a little bit. Birchall tried to center, broken up by O'Coin. Slid ahead to Pearson, his pass. 
Blocked off by Rosinski. Came back to him. He dumped it into the zone. Came around to Bamidian. Over to Strathman. Strat spins away from Spitznagel. Strathman got a look at the replay. Did not get an assist on the Phantoms' first goal. So Andrew still 94 points in his USHL career. As Bamidian sends it to the aforementioned Strathman. Out to center for Burchill. Tried to touch it to Monroe. Knocked away from him. His stick goes flying. He hustles back to grab it as it's sent ahead for Boivere. Chips it too far ahead of himself. Rolls in on right. He'll play it to the line. Kept by Young. Shot wide of the net. Rebound cleared to the line. And Norbert could not hold the zone from in front of his own bench. He'll send it back into the Youngstown end while the Jacks start a change. Bamidian to Rusinski. Out to center for Ramos. Hunter, a little spinorama as he came into the zone, but knocked off the puck by Whitcomb. And it's picked up by Villa. Sent ahead for Galanic, but he was offside ahead of the play. 16 minutes left in the second period. Second period presented by CSL Plasma. Faceoff back in the... Offensive zone for Youngstown. Looks like they're going to drop it to the blocker side of Miles Roberts. Who I believe has stopped four out of four. Or questioning the shot total there at intermission is Marin. Centering feed pops up in the air and then clubbed down the ice by Villa. This is going to be icing again on the Jackson. Unless it rolls on net. Oh, it just missed by about a foot. Right was tight to the post with the twig down on the ice just to make sure nothing crazy happened. But the clear by Via wide of the net, and so another icing violation on the Jacks. Faceoff will be to the left of Roberts this time. As Bovere takes the draw against Young, Young wins it. Hanrahan to Marin. To Patillo, what time he scores! I'm gonna dance a two step in Toledo. Adam Patilla, goal number 22 on the season. Gives Youngstown a 5-3 lead. Time of the goal, 4-15. Little tic-tac-toe off the faceoff win for Youngstown. Patilla all by himself in the high slot. Slapped it past Roberts to the blocker side. As Marin and Hanrahan will get the assists on that one. As O'Coin brings it around his net to the near side and brings it ahead with speed. Hey, O'Coin, red line in blue, left dot now. Tried to feed it in front. Wilson redirected it into the right corner. Picked up there by the Phantoms. They'll bring it ahead. That's Young. Over to Hanrahan. Chip to the line for Marin. Touched it over to Young. Couldn't get a handle on it as it rolls into the right corner. Patilla around the cage. Turned, fires, shot, and a save. By Roberts, he didn't know where it was. Was trapped against his shoulder. He just didn't want to move for fear that the puck might trickle into the net. For a second, I thought Patillo might try the lacrosse goal. He had a ton of time and space as he came around the cage. We saw Sasha Bovere try to do it last night. Some people like to call the lacrosse goal to Michigan, but Michigan is a four-letter word in my house. Kyle Ferraro counting the fingers. And yes, the math does not work there. And Serrano scores off the faceoff! Charlie Serrano. Boom, shakalakalaka, boom. Goal number 11 on the season. Youngstown leads six to three. Time of the goal, five minutes. Great work by Serrato, winning the faceoff, going to the front of the net. Able to get it through the five hole of Roberts. As that one will just be Serrato from Veronin. As penalty up coming on Youngstown off the faceoff as Roberts heads to the bench. Pearson in his own zone, lost the puck, bounces off the Phantoms front of the bench, dropped it back for Villa. 
Jacks need to be careful here in their own zone as Norbrook has it touched away by Serato, but they're going to say no possession there. As Villa starts to bring it up that far wall, throws it to open ice at center, it bounces to Hendricks, touch to Boisvert, I think. Hard to tell with these Jacks jerseys, the eight and the nine. So we'll have our media timeout. Youngstown will be back on the M Street Preservation penalty kill on the other side of the break. 14-22 left in the second. Phantoms lead 6-3. Listening to Youngstown Phantoms Hockey on Western Reserve Radio and Flow Sports. Veterans, the Mahoning County Veterans Service Commission is here to help you. Whether you served five years ago or 50 years ago, if you are honorably discharged from active military service, you may be eligible for benefits, including Veterans VA benefits, county financial assistance, assisted living benefits, and more. Our friendly and supportive staff is ready to help you. Go to mcveterans.org to see all of the benefits and services offered or call today. The Mahoning County Veterans Service Commission, serving those who have served. We now return you to Phantoms Hockey on Western Reserve Radio and the voice of the Phantoms, Matt Lipsack. Ryan Bottero in the box for Young Sound. I believe just his fourth penalty of the season. So we are here in game 51. Just 11 games left in the regular season after tonight. Hard to believe. Clark Cup playoffs start in five weeks. I have to listen for the penalty call as the Jacks control the draw. They're on the power play. Fourth time here today. Gridden, left half wall, behind the cage. Connor tried to feed in front. Miss Bovere out to Villa. Side of the net. It's loose still there. Connor looking for it. Bovere looking for it. Shot saved by Aiden Wright. Rebound to the Jacks. Whitcomb to the line. Over to Bovere, right corner. Center point for Villa. 30 seconds gone on the kill for Youngstown. Sharp angle shot by Bovere, answered by Wright. Hooking the call on Ryan Botterill. As Gridden, top of the circle. Toe drag shot, missed the net well wide. Rebound to Whitcomb. Gridden, left circle. Watched by Machu. Gridden, tried to bank it in off a right. It hit the back of the net, came to Machu. Sends it off the glass, and it came back to him. Up the wall, Birchall able to get the clear. The stanchions at that end of the ice sometimes, I tell you. More than halfway home here on this Adams Street Preservation penalty kill for Youngstown as Muskegon ices the puck. The stretch pass by Xavier Villa did not click. Didn't even see any Muskegon player at the blue line there in the area of where he tried to pass it. 48 seconds left on the kill for Youngstown. Roberts eyeing the faceoff dot to his right. Serato and Klee to take the faceoff. Second power play unit out for Muskegon as Serato won the draw, poked it over to the boards. Klee able to just chip it past Serato over to Gridden, who's staying out here with the second power play unit. At least for a moment now, Via and Gridden will head to the bench so that the full complement of the line change can be done by the Jacks as Galanic loses the puck. Serato carries ahead, has Patilla. Floated it to him, but just too far ahead. Patilla just going to stable it to the end wall. Kroll pro pulls it out of the scrum. 15 seconds left on the Adams Free Preservation penalty kill for Youngstown is Young. Sends it ahead for Galanic, leaned on by Burchill. Muscled him off the puck, got it and cleared it. Robert sets it up for Young as out of the box comes Ryan Botterill. The tree has been preserved as somebody took a high stick. Sam Ronaldo down checking the chicklets. This one might be a four as Sam might have some blood coming. I see Luke Stork indicating four minutes, a double minor for high sticking on Easton Young. Youngstown heading to their second power play of the game. Hope Sam's okay. So he's being checked on by athletic trainer Amber Martinelli. Phantoms lead 6-3. to three. You know, I, I meant to say when the second period started, I can guarantee 4-3 to three will not be the final score. 
these two teams been playing it fast and loose. Klee will take the draw against Serato. Charlie wins the draw. Botterill. Left wall to Serato. Plays it into the corner. Back to Botterill. Behind the cage for Patilla. Tried to bump it back over to Botterill via. Took it. Couldn't clear. Blocked away by Botterill. Now Botts gets it back. In the corner for Patilla. Sends it around to the near side for Young. Grant up to the point for Strathman. Back to Young. To Serato in the box. Can't get the shot away. Grin poked it free, but over to Young. To Strathman. Faked the pass. Gave it to Young. Grant into the dot. Forced wide by Nordberg. Back to the point for Strathman. He'll fire a shot. Arms make the save. Rebound. Patilla puts it home. Turn that music down, Adam Patilla. Second goal of the game. 23rd of the season. A power play goal for Youngstown. And they scored in the first 35 seconds of the double minor, so they still get a full two minutes left here to try to score again as the extra point is up and good. Phantoms lead 7-3. Time of the goal, 8-12. That will be an assist for Andrew Strathman. So now 95 points in his USHL career. And again, looking to be become just the fifth defenseman in the Tier 1 era to get to 100 points as Youngstown wins the draw. Burchill into the corner for Marin, up the wall to Bamidian. Center point, Osborne. Luke looks at the net, fires the shot. Roberts makes the save and hangs on. Fifteen seconds gone on the second part of this double minor. Face off to the left of Roberts. Kroll to take the draw against Rusinski, who won it. Bamidian to the point for Osborne. Back to Sasha. To Luke, top of the circle. Burchill in the left corner. Across, Bamidian, one-timer, fanned on it. Rolled to Marin in the corner, though. Pass up to the line, glove down and held by Osborne. To Burchill in the left circle. Back to Osborne, left point. Luke, Bamidian, one-timer, missed the net. And then bounces into the meshing. So I think that one, they're going to say it's going to stay in the zone. Okay. I always cringe when Sasha goes to fire the one-timer because his shot is just so powerful. Hope nobody tries to just block it with a glove. You're going to break your hand. 123 left in the power play for Youngstown. Back end of a double minor. They scored on the first part. Just took 35 seconds. Adam Patilla, his second goal of the game. As here it's Rusinski winning the draw forward again, and Rue has it. Up to the point for Bermidian. Sasha into the corner for Zach Marin. Zach fed it into the blue paint. Almost redirected in by Miles Gust. Instead, it goes to the corner. For Marin, up to the point for Osborne. Back down the wall for Burchill. Mikey, side of the net for Rusinski. Back to Burchill in the corner. Osborne, left point. Over to the Bemidian. Burchill, right dot. Fired a shot, blocked by Gust. Came right back to Burchill. 50 seconds left on the power play for Youngstown. Burchill to Rusinski. Rue, back to Burchill at the right left half wall. To Osborne. Bemidian, fake the one-timer. Burchill couldn't handle the pass. It bounced on his stick. Burchill. Tangled up by Boivere. Rusinski coming in to help him out. Burchill in there as well. Got it to Marin behind the cage. Zach got hooked as he tried to pass it up the wall to Bemidian. and now Rusinski able to just hold the zone. He'll feed it across to Burchill. Osborne instead picked it up. Luke, puck bounced on him. He's at the left half wall. Down in the corner for Rusinski. Rue to Burchill. Right dot. Rusinski side of the cage, trying to back his way in. He just couldn't do it, almost. He had an open net. Osborne to Burchill, left circle. Five seconds left on the power play. Osborne fed it through, redirected just wide. Burchill chipped the rebound to Rusinski, out of the box. Comes Easton Young. As Gust wedges off Rusinski, puck rolled over to Pearson, sent up the far wall. Boivere redirected it down into the Youngstown zone, but no icing as it died short of the line. Bamidian, hard up the near wall, got it to Serato. Charlie forcing his way toward the cage. Got the shot away, Roberts made the save. Patilla chipped at the rebound and went wide of the net. Patilla knocks it down in the corner. Touched it to Young, but he couldn't find it. Taken by Barry and sent up the wall to Dahlheimer. Near side, O'Coin. Swept to the Youngstown line. Fans bump it back out to center. 
Touched ahead by Patilla, rolls in the right wing corner. Barry's the first one to it. Took a bump from Serato, but able to get it around to Dahlheimer. Kept at the point by Wilson, but then couldn't get it to Young. Taken by Dahlheimer and sent out to center for O'Coin. Into the zone they come. Dahlheimer trying to make his way toward the net. Fanned on the shot. Phantoms pick up the loose biscuit. Patilla skating ahead. Three on one maybe for the Phantoms. Serato chipped it through the low slot, but the Phantoms had broken off their rush. Serato now with the steal. Over to Hanrahan, couldn't pull the trigger. He'll just start the cycle. Feeds it down low to Patilla, whacked it around the boards. Comes to Wilson at the left point. He'll shoot it on net. Gloved and held by Miles Roberts. We'll have immediate timeout. 8.28 left in the second. Phantoms lead 7-3. Listening to Youngstown Phantoms Hockey on Western Reserve Radio and Flow Sports. Passion, talent, development. NCAA hockey offers all that and its players graduate at a 90% rate. Joe Pavelski. Backhand score! Wow, what a goal! Johnny Gaudreau. Score! And Tori Krupp were stars on campus before the NHL stage. Whether you are a fan or a player, nothing compares to college hockey. Visit collegehockeyinc.com and follow at College Hockey. Champions of the college hockey world! Welcome back to Western Reserve Radio's coverage of the Youngstown Phantoms. Now here's the voice of the Phantoms, Matt Lipsack. Welcome back inside the Cavelli Center. 8.28 left in the second period. Phantoms lead 7-3. Faceoff will be in the offensive zone for Young Sounds. They're going to drop it to the right of Miles Roberts. Phantoms, eight shots here in the period. I think seven for Muskegon. No, check that, two. Shots on goal were 14-8 at the end of the first as faceoff is won by Ronaldo. DeHaro toward the cage, hit Ronaldo in the backside. Tried to get the backhander on net, chip just wide in the air by Danny Clares as that one looked like it was going to flutter into the cage. Clares, however, at least for the moment, saves the snowman from going up on the board. Birchall couldn't keep the zone as DeHaro picks it up at center. Set near side for DeHaro. Or for Machu, sorry, as Machu lost his footing. Virgil tried to sweep into the zone. Jacks fired right back to the Youngstown end. DeHaro to Ronaldo couldn't enter the zone. Came back for Machu. Tomesh, D to D over to Connor DeHaro, who has a goal here today. From the official's crease, fired it off the corner boards. It's going to settle down on the back of the net. And that will draw a whistle. Faceoff will come out to the neutral zone, I'm sure. Although Zach Bennett, the linesman, is lining up to drop the puck to the right of Miles Roberts, usually comes back to the zone where puck was fired from on the out of play. But all right, we'll roll with it. Face off to the right of Roberts. Boulevard going to take the draw here against Rusinski. Fourth line out for Youngstown against the top line of the Jacks. Face off warning on Youngstown. Michael Monroe, a little encroachment there on the far wall. As Rosinski won it forward, but it rolled over to Xavier Villa. Near wall for Whitcomb. Stretched it out ahead looking for Boivere, but Osborne going to cut him off at the pass. Luke carries around the cage to the near side. Chipped it out to center. He took a big hit there. Diving effort by Rusinski. Trying to get it into the zone, but it's going to bounce to the Jacks. Boivere over looking for Solovey. Redirected back out to center. Rusinski just past his blade. Picked up by Monroe. Fed to Ramos. Shot kick saved by Roberts. Ramos to his own rebound. Carries around the net to the near side. Hunter, right half wall, cycled down low for Rusinski. He was wedged off by Boivere, but Rue, able to get it back. Skate to stick, got it to Ramos, but he's pinned to the boards by Norberg. Hunter fights through the check, brings it up the near wall. Ramos still with it. Had a lane, turned and fired, blocker save. Rebound glove down by Villa. He'll carry around the cage. Serato trying to apply some pressure as it slid to Norberg. Now out to center for Solovey. Solovey dropped it off for Whitcomb. But on the crisscross, broken up by the Phantoms, cleared out the center for Serato. Charlie just going to bounce it toward the net. Roberts played it. Thought it could have been an icing whistle as O'Coin looks for it behind the net. Lewis back on the ice as Serato had it chipped away from him. Shot toward the cage by Bamidian. Stopped by Miles Roberts. 6.33 left in the second period. Phantoms lead 
Face off to the left of Robert. Serato to take the draw against Kroll. Serato wins it. Bamidian back toward the line to Lewis at the wall. Sent into the corner for Botterill. Bots around to the far side. Serato caught up to it. Charlie with it being watched by Kroll. And then poked it out to center, but Serato going to wedge him off. Got body position as they'll battle in front of the Muskegon bench. Serato kicked it free, but it squirts back to the Muskegon defense as a coin. Sends it up to the line for Kroll, but Kroll redirected it into his own bench with 6.09 left in the second period. Second period presented by CSL Plasma. Face-off will be right in front of the Muskegon bench. Young to take the draw against Kroll. And Young won that draw back to Bamidian. Sasha backhands it across off of Zach Marin. Now touch to Strathman. Strat pulls up behind the cage. Threw it to the far corner. Kroll trying to take it away from him. Young in to help out his defenseman. So the Jacks on the forecheck create the turnover. Henrik's in the right corner. Up the wall to Young. Back down the wall. Broken up for a moment by Marin, but it did roll to Henrik's. Over to Toll. Toward the cage. Missed it wide. Young to the rebound. Threw it through the slot. Nobody there to touch it for the Jacks. Back around the wall it comes. To the far side. Cycled down low by Pearson. Looking for Kroll behind that left corner. Henrik's to Pearson. Bounces up to the point for Toll. His shot blocked by a diving effort from Adam Patilla. Comes back around the wall. Young pinching in, trying to keep the play alive for the Jacks is Marin. One-hander couldn't get it down into the corner. Young back to the point. Shot blocked in the slot by Nathan Lewis, and he'll start to break ahead. Check that. That's Strathman. Over to Patilla. Patilla across the ice. Strathman couldn't glove it down. He'll catch up to it in the corner as he's helped to the ice by Spitznagel. Half wall, Young trying to keep it alive, but Young pushes it out to center for Muskegon. Pearson, top of the right circle of the Youngstown zone. 4.45 left in the second. Youngstown leads 7-3. Solovey around the cage, fit it through the low slot. Nobody touched it for Muskegon until Pearson caught up with it along the wall. Strathman took Spitzmagel to the boards as Nordberg's pinching in on the play. Feeds it up the wall for Dahlheimer. Down the wall comes a Spitznagel behind the cage. Took a shoulder from Jack Wilson as this one all the way around was passed by Muskegon. So no icing. Youngstown gets a line change. Via over to Dahlheimer. Trying to dance away from Veronin. Fed it up to the line. Thought that Solovey might have entered the zone offside there, but... Touched out to center by Youngstown anyway. Nordberg at the red line. Lifts it to the end glass. Picked up by Hanrahan. Sent over to Wilson. Jack snapped it ahead. Picked off at the red line by Connor. Muskegon into the zone. For Klee, shot blocked. Came back to Klee. Top of the circles. That shot blocked as well by Veronin. Burchill clears the rebound. Into the Phantoms bench. Look out, Coach Ward. Ryan Ward, of course, wearing eight stitches from February the 24th. Took a puck to the head, redirected by Hunter Ramos with about 30 seconds left in that game against the Chicago Steel. 348 here left in the second. Youngstown leads 7-3. A little bit of a false start there by Youngstown. Now the puck is down. And the Phantoms able to clear it down the ice. This one might slide on goal. Nope, going to go just wide of the cage. So Phantoms will be guilty of an icing whistle as seven seconds tick off the clock. And we'll drop the puck again in the Youngstown defensive zone to the blocker side of Aiden Wright, who's only faced two shots here in this second period. Klee to take the draw against Rusinski, and Rue got the win. Machu off the glass, out to center. Knocked ahead by Ramos. He got it past Barry. Ramos caught up to it at the half wall. Fed across for DeHaro. Plays it off the wall. Connor in the left corner. DeHaro around the net, still has it. Connor fed it across, hit a couple of skates, and redirected to the left side for Machu. Up the wall for Rusinski. Rue. Got a shot blocker saved by Roberts. Puck stayed in play. Played by Gritton to the left side. Gritton caught up to his own pass and did get it out to center. Found Connor. 
across the ice was looking for Barry and have to play it off the near boards as Ramos takes him to the wall. Battle in front of the benches. Ramos bumped it back to the line, but picked up by the Jacks defense and penalty up coming on Youngstown. I think maybe a little too enthusiastic there was Hunter Ramos as Bovera just kind of gets tackled. Drop back for Connor, shot blocked. And then there's the touch by Youngstown. That'll draw the penalty. As Hunter Ramos will go to the box for cross-checking. Time of the penalty, 17-14. And that one I think Hunter definitely got his money's worth on. There's maybe one too many whacks there by Ramos. Fifth power play of the game for Muskegon, two for four so far. Faceoff will be to the blocker side of Aiden Wright. Second power play unit going to start for Muskegon. Jacks control the draw via down the wall. Behind the cage looking for Klee, but it came through to Solove as he was tangled up with Osborne. Up to the point for Kroll. Walks the blue line. Gave it up to Hendricks, fed it through the box. Looking for the redirect on the back door by Solovey, but didn't click in. Youngstown able to get the clear. Via back forward in his own zone. Ronaldo heavy on the forecheck as Via able to chip it to Kroll. Drop back behind him for Via. 30 seconds gone on the Adam Street Preservation penalty kill. Via pulls up at the right point. Feeds it across for Hendricks. To Klee, back to Hendricks. Fanned on the pass. Going to bounce to Pittner. Torrey off the glass and down the ice. Not quite far enough for a full change for Youngstown, but Ronaldo does get to the bench, and on comes Ryan Botterill. Kroll, a little start-stop as he comes into the zone, threw it into the right corner. Osborne checked him, but coming up to cover was Solve up to the point for Villa. To Solve back to Villa, bobbled on him, able to keep the line, fit it down to Gridden. Behind the cage, it's Connor. Connor. Bounced out in front and gloved and held by Aiden Wright. As Solove gave him a little bump after the whistle, linesman in quickly to separate them. 54 seconds left on the Adams Street Preservation penalty kill. 140 left in the second period. Youngstown leads 7 to 3. Shots on goal 25 to 10 in favor of Youngstown. Two in the period for Muskegon and 11 for Youngstown. Spams win the faceoff and get the clear. Believe that was Machu doing the job for Youngstown. As it's via ahead for Gridden to Connor. Chipped down the wall to Haro, poked it toward the end wall, but Whitcomb got there first. Fed it over to the left side for Gridden. For via. Down in the corner was looking for Bouvier. Bounced behind the net. Phantoms cleared around the wall. Whitcomb couldn't hold the zone. And it bounces down toward the Muskegon line. But Villa able to wedge off Bottero and send it back out to center. 20 seconds left on the Adams Street Preservation penalty kill. Gridden, his pass broken up and sent to center by Bottero. Minute remaining in the second period. Bouvier being harassed at center by Patilla. Chipped ahead to the line. Skate to stick for Gridden. Spins away from Patilla. Walks the line. Feeds it to Young. Into the corner for Bavare. Sharp angle shot missed the net. Gritton can't hold the zone as Ramos is out of the box. The tree has been preserved. Touched away by Patilla. He'll come into the zone. Patilla to the middle for Botterill. Shot blocker saved by Roberts. Botterill to the rebound. Fed it around the boards, but the Phantoms are changing, trying to get the penalty killers off the ice. Young off the window and into the Phantoms bench. Look out, Coach Ward. Ducking every time the puck comes anywhere near the... Near the bench, I, I think he is standing purposefully very close to assistant coach Brandon Gatkin. I think Brandon has about six inches on coach Ward and you just kind of see Ryan duck his head right behind Brandon's shoulder every time the, the puck comes near the bench. Watch the replay, you'll see it. Face off to the left of Roberts, 24.9 left in the second. Solovey to take the draw against Young. Rusinski setting up in the shotgun. As Young had instead had to win it forward. Young fit it through the low slot. Marin wasn't looking. Rusinski holds the line, got it to Marin. Zach walks the blue line. 
Just kept the line, fed it into the corner, looking for Young. Ten seconds left in the period. Rosinski knocked down behind the cage as it came in front, but Marin couldn't get it. Spitznagel skating ahead with five seconds left. Thumped it into the zone, went wide of the cage. Right, going to clear it over the glass again, and that'll be a delay of game penalty on Youngstown with 1.5 seconds left in the period. Second game in a row, a Phantoms goalie has put the puck clean over the glass. Would love to see Aiden just clear it up the middle there. And as with 1.5 seconds left, Miles Roberts is gonna head to the bench for the extra attacker. Because Youngstown cannot score with 1.5 seconds left in the period, but Muskegon can at least make the attempt. Face off to the glove side, sorry, blocker side of Aiden Wright. Kroll to take the draw against Serato. Charlie's job just to kill a second and a half here as the Jacks get the win, the shot goes wide of the cage and that is how the second period will end. Youngstown gets three in the frame and they lead seven to three. Shots on goal for the game, 25 to 10 in favor of Youngstown. Phantoms outshoot Muskegon 11 to two in the second period. We're gonna go ahead and step aside for a timeout. When we come back, we'll have the second intermission report here for you on West Reserve Radio and Flow Hockey. The Mahoning Valley's leader for golf, Milk Creek Golf Course, is now booking tee times for 2024. We offer stay and play opportunities available with nine area hotel partners. For more information, visit our website at millcreekmetroparks.org. Also, look for new exciting opportunities coming soon, including an indoor player development center with Trackman, an indoor Callaway club fitting center, and an Odyssey fitting studio in 2024. Follow us on Facebook at Milk Creek Golf Course or call 330-740-7112. At Two Men in a Truck, we know moving is tough, but we make it easy. Whether your move is big or small, we'll make it a smooth one. We're the movers who care, and we'll prove it with our 96% referral rate and courteous professional movers. For your next move, call Two Men in a Truck, Youngstown, 330-758-2110. That's 330-758-2110, and go Phantoms! Passion. Talent. Development. NCAA hockey offers all that and its players graduate at a 90% rate. Joe Pavelski. Backhand scores! Wow, what a goal! Johnny Gaudreau. Score! And Tori Krupp were stars on campus before the NHL stage. Whether you are a fan or a player, nothing compares to college hockey. Visit collegehockeyinc.com and follow at College Hockey. Champions of the college hockey world! When disaster strikes, you don't have time to waste. You need Crago's Restoration, your trusted partner in restoring your home. From water damage and flood restoration to sewage cleanup, we've got you covered. And that's not all. We also offer pressure washing, mold remediation, and even interior demolition. Certified in flood and sewage damage restoration, we're the experts you can count on. Call Crago's Restoration today at 330-610-4193. 330-610-4193. Crago's Restoration, where your home's recovery begins. The Doubletree by Hilton Youngstown Downtown is proud to be the official hotel partner of the Youngstown Phantoms. Located in downtown's historical standby building and fully updated with today's amenities while preserving its historical charm and neoclassical architecture of 1907. Offering modern conveniences such as on-site room service, free Wi-Fi, complimentary business center, and a 24-hour fitness center. Events are also memorable with over 5,000 square feet of meeting space, including our top floor ballroom accented by 13-foot ceilings, Palladian windows, and views from 12 stories up. Conveniently located within walking distance to the Cavelli Center, the Youngstown Foundation Amphitheater, Youngstown State University, Oh Wow Science Center, and Dior Performing Arts Center, the Doubletree by Hilton Youngstown Downtown is a proud partner of the Youngstown Phantoms and invites you to be our valued guest. Get a me drain. Get a me drain. Drain or sewer problems? Call Get a me drain at 330 758 5031 and get it fixed fast. Call now 330 758 5031. 
Just like the Phantoms, HBK, CPAs, and consultants know every successful team needs a winning game plan. Count on the professionals at HBK, CPAs, and consultants, HBK's wealth advisors, and HBK valuation and litigation support for all of your personal and business tax, audit, assurance, financial planning, business consulting, and wealth management needs. For more than 65 years, the HBK family of firms have been advising thousands of clients on how to grow and protect their wealth. Contact them today so they can help you and your team do the same. Call 758-8613 or visit hbkcpa.com to learn how. We now return you to Phantoms Hockey on Western Reserve Radio and the voice of the Phantoms, Matt Lipsack. Welcome back into the Cavelli Center for the second intermission report. At the end of two periods of play, the Youngstown Phantoms lead the Muskegon Lumberjacks by the score of 7-3. Shots on goal, 25-10 in favor of Youngstown Phantoms. Outshoot Muskegon 11-2 in the second period. Phantoms came into the period leading 4-3. Then got a goal from Adam Patilla at the 415 mark. Zach Marin with the assist. Youngstown led 5 to 3. Then at the five minute mark, Charlie Serrato able to get one home off a faceoff win. Kuzma Veronin and Tomas Machu with the helpers on that. I thought it was just going to be Veronin, but we'll have to go to the tape to take a look at that one. Serrato's 11th of the season. Youngstown led 6 to 3. And then Phantoms able to cash in on the front end of a double minor. Easton Young given. Four minutes for high sticking. Drew some blood on the mouth of Sam Ronaldo and Patilla able to put home the rebound of Andrew Strathman's shot for Patilla. Second of the game, 23rd of the season, 23. Now leads the team. Strathman and Grant Young getting helpers on that one for Strathman. Point number 95 in his USHL career as today we saw Sasha Bouvier of the Muskegon Lumberjacks get the 100th point of his USHL career. Miles Roberts in the cage for the Muskegon Lumberjacks has stopped eight out of 11 since coming on in relief. Though I'm pretty sure that should be 11 out of 13. Shikagadze have started and was pulled after the fourth Phantoms goal. Aiden Wright has stopped seven out of 10 in the net for Youngstown. Phantom power play is one for two. Muskegon power play two for five and they are on their sixth power play when we start the third period as Aiden Wright called for delay of game right there a second before the second period ended. We're going to go ahead and step aside for a timeout. When we come back, we'll take a look at the out-of-town scoreboard here for you on West Reserve Radio and Flow Hockey. Looking to buy or sell a home? Team Marzo with Next Home Go 30 Realty can help. As a premier real estate team in the Mahoney Valley, we bring a unique and progressive approach to real estate using top listing technology, unique signage, and best practices in mobile and online marketing. Our customer-centric approach combines the best of technology with years of marketing expertise to provide an exceptional buying or selling experience. Call us today at 330-503-2250 so you can move with Marzo. Premier Bank is powered by people. People like our proud and strong and wonderfully one-of-a-kind customers who trust us with their dreams and goals. People like our attentive employees who listen and collaborate to consistently deliver the best customer service in the business. People like those in our community who help us make the places we call home as strong as they can possibly be. People like you who we look forward to connecting with at yourpremierbank.com. Premier Bank, powered by people. Member FDIC. Signature Granite in North Lima is your go-to in the countertop trade. We provide workmanship for both residential and commercial markets. In need of a new look in your kitchen, bathroom, bar, or any other countertop installation? Look no further. Our services include measurements, handcrafted custom fabrication, complete installation, custom edge finishing, and outdoor bars, and much more. For a free estimate, call 330-549-9770 and make your next project a signature. 
veterans. The Mahoning County Veterans Service Commission is here to help you. Whether you served five years ago or 50 years ago, if you are honorably discharged from active military service, you may be eligible for benefits, including veterans VA benefits, county financial assistance, assisted living benefits, and more. Our friendly and supportive staff is ready to help you. Go to mcveterans.org to see all of the benefits and services offered or call today. The Mahoning County Veterans Service Commission, serving those who have served. This prize is what you could win on the new $5 Wheel of Fortune scratch-off from the Ohio Lottery. There's only one letter missing at the end of B-I-G-M-O-N-E. <clears throat> Why, yes, uh, the answer is big money. $100,000 big money. And if you don't win, you can enter for a chance to attend a Wheel of Fortune live taping where you could win more big prizes. Lottery players are subject to Ohio laws and commission regulations. Play responsibly. Wheel of Fortune is a trademark of Califon Productions. Feeling dehydrated or sluggish? Did you enjoy your Phantoms game just a little too much? We can help you get back on track and hydrated in record time. With our vitamin-infused IV drips, we'll have you feeling healthy and energized so you can get back to your busy schedule. Whether you want to boost your immune system, increase your energy, or stay healthy through the winter months, we can help. Find us on Facebook or theyoungstowndrip.com and book your appointment today. You hear it all the time. Why Youngstown State University? Here's why. Because when it comes to engineering, medicine, sports, business, and the skills you need to take your place in the world, we take a backseat to nobody. Because we're the kind of people who look out for each other. Because we care about you, your success, and our future together. We are Youngstown State University, and now you know why. Show off your Youngstown pride by sporting the latest in Phantoms gear. Don't know where to get it? Head over to youngstownphantoms.com and click on the Team Shop link for the latest in jerseys, hats, t-shirts, hoodies, and more. Let everyone know that you're the biggest Phantoms fan around. And be sure to stop by the Dunkin' Donuts Team Shop next time you're at the Cavelli Center. Head to youngstownphantoms.com and visit the Team Shop today. Welcome back to Western Reserve Radio's coverage of the Youngstown Phantoms. Now here's the voice of the Phantoms, Matt Lipsack. Welcome back inside the Gavelli Center during the second intermission report. Phantoms with a 7-3 lead. Let's take a look at the out-of-town scoreboard. Just one other USHL game today. That is between the U-17s and the Chicago Steel. And the U-17s lead Chicago by the score of 3-0. That game also at the second intermission. NHL scoreboard. Games currently in action. The Predators and Wild tied at two. Two minutes into the third period. One minute left in the first in Carolina and the Hurricanes lead the Calgary Flames two to nothing. Earlier this afternoon, the Edmonton Oilers shut out the Penguins down at PPG Paint Arena, Arena by the score of four to nothing. Two games later tonight, Coyotes and Blackhawks getting underway in about 15 minutes and then an eight o'clock start, 5 p.m on the West Coast between the New York Islanders and the Anaheim Ducks. College hockey scoreboard. Got last night's scores, but I wanna see the two games that are being played today. Ohio State and Wisconsin getting ready to get underway, but puck drop has not happened at the Kohl Center in Madison as of yet. And then a seven o'clock Eastern puck drop between St. Thomas and Lake Superior. For both of those teams, it is win, for both those games rather, it is win or go home. Although Wisconsin, as the number seven team in the country right now, they will see their season extended in the NCAA tournament. But for Ohio State, win or go home. That'll do it for the out of town scoreboard and the second intermission report. We're gonna go ahead and step aside for a timeout. When we come back, the Phantoms will be on the Adams Street Preservation Penalty Kill here on West Reserve Radio and Flow Hockey. The Mahoning Valley's leader for golf, Milk Creek Golf Course, is now booking tee times for 2024. We offer stay and play opportunities available with nine area hotel partners. For more information, visit our website at millcreekmetroparks.org. Also, look for new exciting opportunities coming soon, including an indoor player development center with Trackman, an indoor Callaway club fitting center, and an Odyssey fitting studio in 2024. Follow us on Facebook at Milk Creek Golf Course or call 330-740-7112. 
At Two Men in a Truck, we know moving is tough, but we make it easy. Whether your move is big or small, we'll make it a smooth one. We're the movers who care, and we'll prove it with our 96% referral rate and courteous professional movers. For your next move, call Two Men in a Truck, Youngstown. 330-758-2110. That's 330-758-2110. And go Phantoms! When disaster strikes, you don't have time to waste. You need Crago's Restoration, your trusted partner in restoring your home. From water damage and flood restoration to sewage cleanup, we've got you covered. And that's not all. We also offer pressure washing, mold remediation, and even interior demolition. Certified in flood and sewage damage restoration, we're the experts you can count on. Call Crago's Restoration today at 330-610-4193. 330-610-4193. Crago's Restoration, where your home's recovery begins. Get a new drink. Get me drain. Drain or sewer problems? Call Get Me Drain at 330 758 5031 and get it fixed fast. Call now 330 758 5031. Looking to buy or sell a home? Team Marzo with Next Home Go 30 Realty can help. As a premier real estate team in the Mahoney Valley, we bring a unique and progressive approach to real estate using top listing technology, unique signage, and best practices in mobile and online marketing. Our customer-centric approach provides the best of technology with years of marketing expertise to provide an exceptional buying or selling experience. Call us today at 330-503-2250 so you can move with Marzo. Premier Bank is powered by people. People like our proud and strong and wonderfully one-of-a-kind customers who trust us with their dreams and goals. People like our attentive employees who listen and collaborate to consistently deliver the best customer service in the business. People like those in our community who help us make the places we call home as strong as they can possibly be. People like you who we look forward to connecting with at yourpremierbank.com. Premier Bank, powered by people. Member FDIC. Signature Granite in North Lima is your go-to in the countertop trade. We provide workmanship for both residential and commercial markets. In need of a new look in your kitchen, bathroom, bar, or any other countertop installation? Look no further. Our services include measurements, handcrafted custom fabrication, complete installation, custom edge finishing, and outdoor bars, and much more. For a free estimate, call 330-549-9770 and make your next project a signature. Veterans, the Mahoning County Veterans Service Commission is here to help you. Whether you served five years ago or 50 years ago, if you are honorably discharged from active military service, you may be eligible for benefits, including Veterans VA benefits, county financial assistance, assisted living benefits, and more. Our friendly and supportive staff is ready to help you. Go to mcveterans.org to see all of the benefits and services offered or call today. The Mahoning County Veterans Service Commission, serving those who have served. This prize is what you could win on the new $5 Wheel of Fortune scratch-off from the Ohio Lottery. There's only one letter missing at the end of B-I-G-M-O-N-E. <clears throat> Why, yes, uh, the answer is big money. $100,000 big money. And if you don't win, you can enter for a chance to attend a Wheel of Fortune live taping where you could win more big prizes. Lottery players are subject to Ohio laws and commission regulations. Play responsibly. Wheel of Fortune is a trademark of Califon Productions. Feeling dehydrated or sluggish? Did you enjoy your Phantoms game just a little too much? We can help you get back on track and hydrated in record time. With our vitamin-infused IV drips, we'll have you feeling healthy and energized so you can get back to your busy schedule. Whether you want to boost your immune system, increase your energy, or stay healthy through the winter months, we can help. Find us on Facebook or theyoungstowndrip.com and book your appointment today. You hear it all the time. Why Youngstown State University? Here's why. Because when it comes to engineering, medicine, sports, business, and the skills you need to take your place in the world, we take a backseat to nobody. Because we're the kind of people who look out for each other. Because we care about you, your success, and our future together. We are Youngstown State University, and now you know why. We now return you to Phantoms Hockey on Western Reserve Radio and the voice of the Phantoms, Matt Lipsack. Welcome 
Welcome back inside the Cavelli Center for the start of the third period. Phantoms lead Muskegon 7-3. Shots on goal for the game, 25-10 in favor of Youngstown. Phantoms going to start the third period on the Adams Street Preservation penalty kill. Zach Marin serving the penalty for Aiden Wright, who is guilty of delay of game. As Aiden trying to just kill the last second and a half of the second period, put the puck over the glass without touching the glass. And if the goalie does it in the USHL, that's a penalty you can roll for initiative because the third period is underway. Jacks win the draw. Via to Gridden. Fed across for Boivere. Boivere to the net, got the shot away. Wright made the save. DeHaro couldn't clear the rebound. Kept in at the point by Whitcomb. Whitcomb to Via. Back to Whitcomb. Across to Gridden. Toe drag. Shot. Glove save, Aiden Wright. 25 seconds gone on the Adams Tree Preservation penalty kill. 24 seconds into the third, third period presented by Safehold. Be Serrato here to take the draw against Bovere. Serrato wins that one very cleanly. Dahara around the cage to the near side and down the ice. Got it on net. Roberts makes the save over into the corner, but picked up there by Serrato. Lost it behind the net to Gridden. Played ahead, and Connor has a step on right. Shot save, rebound poked away. Machu up the wall, kept by Gridden. Plays it over to Whitcomb. Center point via to Gridden. Top of the circle, watched by Machu. To via, fake the shot. He's watched by Serrato. Now he'll shoot it away, but it's blocked by DeHaro. Rebound came back to Connor, but he cleared it off the leg of Charlie Serrato. That stung Charlie a little bit as he goes for the bench. But then DeHaro able to get the clear as Villa stops it behind the net of his own zone. Feeds it head to Gritton as the second power play unit cycling on for the Jacks. To Kroll, to Klee. Pass broken up. Cleared up the wall by Burchill. Diving effort by Gritton, but Burchill got it out the center. Two on one for the Phantoms. Burchill into the zone, but then just punched down by the Jacks. Three on two the other way. Pittner broke it up at the line. Ronaldo picks up the loose puck and clears it as Cavelli Center crowd lets the officials know what they think of the non call on the hit against Mikey Burchill. 15 seconds left in the power play for Muskegon as Osborne strips his man and clears the puck. Just to the side of the net, Roberts stops it up, gives it to Hendricks. Five seconds left in the kill for Youngstown. Stolen at center by Patilla. Into the zone. Shot just missed the top corner of the cage. Out of the box comes Zach Marin. And the tree has been preserved as Rusinski takes a slash to the ankles. Gets into the zone but chipped it wide of the cage. Rusinski left it for Marin but taken away by Barry. To Kroll in the corner. Pass broken up by the Phantoms. That's Marin down there. Rusinski up the wall. Kept by Bamidian for a moment. Rusinski also keeping. Came to Marin. Still battling at the right point. Sam's trying to get this going, but it comes free for the Jacks, and they'll at least clear it out to center. Strathman back in his own zone. D to D over to Bamidian. Sasha up ahead. Touched by Rusinski. Going to deflect on net, and Roberts will play it over to the defense. Up the far wall. Jacks get it out to center. Middle of the ice. Poked away from Villa by Strathman, but then he'll regather. Spin it back to his own line and start the attack again. Slipped it ahead, was looking for Spitznagel. Going to squirt behind the cage where Strathman will pick it up. Spitznagel takes Strathman to the wall, but Bamidian able to get the puck at least over to the far wall. Pitchforks it up the boards, came to the point. Via had the line, tried to feed it down low. Broken up by Strathman. Strat to the red line. Fed it ahead for Monroe. Michael to Serrato, shot blocked. Jacks get to the rebound. And they'll carry to center as behind the play... Strathman draws something on Via, and then Nordberg shoved down Strathman. Hanrahan wants to have a conversation, as and Colson Hanrahan fears only bear in the woods. As Via heads to the box. Looks like that will be the only penalty on the play.
time of the penalty, 3.20. Youngstown to their third man advantage of the game, one for two. Cashed in on the double minor in the second period. Serato to take the draw. Serato won that draw cleanly. Strathman to Bottero, side of the cage. Patilla dropped it behind him for Serato, couldn't get it on the net. Out to the right point, but Strat can't get there in time, and Connor will get the clear. Wright will set it up for Serato. Charlie leaves it for Strathman. 20 seconds gone on the power play. To Young, to Strathman, to Serato. Red line and blue into the zone. Down the left side, rolled off his twig into the corner. Kroll got there, fed it over to Barry, and he'll clear it down the ice. Stopped right at the blue line by Strathman. He'll retreat to the red, wait for his team to touch up. Fed it off of a Muskegon stick, but then it bounced right to the Jacks. I think that was Cody Kroll. Had it hit his skate, it bounced to Barry, who cleared it again. As Wright sets it up for Strathman. Carrying the mail, gives it to Young. Grant's red line and blue into the zone. Forced his way over to the wall. Battling for it, lost it, got it back. Came down the boards, and now it is Nathan Lewis with it at the right point. Through Strathman to Young. Back to Lewis, top of the circles. Over to Burchill. Mikey makes a move. Strathman, one-timer, missed the net. Rebound comes to the weak side. For Marin. Zach behind the cage for Lewis. Nate tried to feed it back in front. Burchill looking for it, picked up by the Jacks. They'll send it around the wall and down the ice. Strathman heads to the bench. Osborne on as Wright sets it up. 30 seconds left in the power play for Youngstown. Great to see Tyrell Rogers in the press box. Press box. Call the fans box office for tickets for more information. 330-747, puck extension four. As here's a shot by Marin. Answered by Roberts. Rebound cleared by the Jacks. Osborne hustling back for it. Takes a check from Solovey. Ten seconds left on the power play for Youngstown. Solovey lost his footing as Bemidian blazes ahead. Over to Burchill. Couldn't take it cleanly. Got it to Lewis, fed it into the corner. Two seconds left in the power play. Over to the left corner, now out of the box. Comes Xavier Villa. Phantoms power play, one for three on the game. Boisvert played it out to center, picked up at the red line by Bominian. Sasha backtracks to his own zone. Feeds it to the line for Marin, chipped toward the Muskegon zone, but sent right back out to center by the Jacks. Marin had lost his twig, picks it up as Spitznagel enters the zone. Spitznagel took a bump from Hanrahan and lost the puck. Rusinski up the boards, picked up by Spitznagel. He'll turn and fire shot was blocked by Osborne. Rebound poked to the point, and it's a two-on-one for Youngstown. Actually a three-on-one. Marin, Burchill, shot, missed the top corner of the cage. Rebound off the glass. And carried ahead by the Jacks, it's Spitznagel. Carried it just inside the line, took the bump from Hanrahan, then a second bump as Burchill will battle for it down low. Rusinski. Snaps it ahead off the stick of Ronaldo at center. He's hustling after it. No icing here. Great hustle by Sam. Sam battling against Easton Young. Chips it back to the corner. Swept up to the point by Ramos. Machu shot redirected high maybe by Young. Dahlheimer to the rebound for Muskegon. 13-30 left in this third period. Phantoms lead by four. Young out to center for the Jacks. Got it ahead. Swept it around the boards. Came over to Solovey on the left side, but Machu took it away and bounced it out to center, but it rolled right back to the Jacks' defense. They'll send it back into the Youngstown zone while they start a line change. Wilson behind the net. Comes out near side. Fake left went white, right to get around Boisvert. Ahead to Ronaldo. Puck rolling to the right corner. Toll got there first, sent it around to the left side, but Veronin centering feed, but nobody in front for Youngstown, and it went just under the stick of Jake Toll. Solovey picks it up off the far wall. Fired out to center by Toll, broken up by the Phantoms, and ahead comes Serato. Serato took a slash, got the shot away. No call of coming. As somehow Jake Toll's defense there was legal. As we got a fight at center ice, Taharo trading punches with Justin Solovey. Solovey tackles him. That one came absolutely out of nowhere. And we'll have our media timeout, 12-24. Left in the third, Youngstown leads 7-3. Listen to Youngstown Phantoms Hockey and West Reserve Radio and Flow Sports. Looking to buy or sell a home? Team Marzo with Next Home Go 30 Realty can help. 
As a premier real estate team in the Mahoney Valley, we bring a unique and progressive approach to real estate using top listing technology, unique signage, and best practices in mobile and online marketing. Our customer-centric approach combines the best of technology with years of marketing expertise to provide an exceptional buying or selling experience. Call us today at 330-503-2250 so you can move with Marzo. Welcome back to Western Reserve Radio's coverage of the Youngstown Phantoms. Now here's the voice of the Phantoms, Matt Lipsack. Welcome back inside the Cavelli Center, 1224. Left in the third period as Simba Cam is going on here at the Cavelli Center. Tyrell Rogers trying to pick up my son John, but we just couldn't get the camera's attention. Great time here in the press box, always here at the Cavelli Center. As the night is over for both Solovey and DeHaro, as they both get five for fighting and misconducts. And so with less than 15 minutes remaining, they have both been sent to the locker room. Faceoff will be in the neutral zone right in front of the Phantom's bench. All right, we're ready for play. Serato to take the draw against Pulver. Serato wins it, but apparently unfairly. And so we will drop the puck again. No goals so far here in the third period. Shots on goal are 29 to 13 favor of Youngstown. That's four in the period for Youngstown and I think maybe just two again for the Lumberjacks as they bring it ahead. Snapped ahead looking for Bouvier but out of his reach and icing will be the call on the Muskegon Lumberjacks. Face off down into the Jack zone. 12.09 left in the third. Third period presented by Safehold. Faceoff will be to the right of Roberts. Who has seen 15 shots and I think stopped 12 of them as the shot from the right side from Bouvier swallowed up by Aiden Wright. 14 out of 17, there we go, is the count from Miles Roberts who came on in relief for the second time this weekend. So he came in, I think, about six minutes into the second period on Friday. Ended up getting the win as Muskegon came from behind to win in the shootout. Serato wins the draw. Osborne plays it to the line, kept by Norberg, then second effort, played ahead. Serato into the zone. Carries it around the cage and then fanned on the pass and lost his footing. Played to the line by Muskegon. Swept back to Osborne by Botterill. Luke gains the red line, fired it into the zone, came off the corner to Roberts at the side of the net, played to the defense. Out to center, has it into skates, did Gridden, couldn't find it as he took a bump from Nate Lewis. Via into the zone, shot off the pipe. That close to a goal for Xavier Via as Osborne plays it out to center, and Gridden takes the helmet off Monroe, and <laughs> he wants a piece. This is gonna draw a crowd, Nate Lewis jumping on people. Everybody's coming in. Only person not in the scrum, Michael Monroe. As this is just a huge mass of humanity in the right wing corner of the Youngstown zone, Osborne takes his man down. Nate Lewis wrestling with David Klee, Lewis goes down. Rusinski battling against his man. Everybody has a partner except Michael Monroe. As Luke Osborne has his man down in a headlock. Rusinski still battling against his man, took him down. That was Whitcomb who came late into the pile. Now Monroe's back in the pile. As Monroe gets knocked down and gets back up, wants some more. Rusinski's still going. Whitcomb and Rusinski continue to battle. 
Lewis and Klee seem like they're both done. They're just kind of standing next to each other, give each other a pat on the backside. Hey, good bout. And I think everything has finally calmed down. And now I take it back as Barry comes over and shoves Osborne. Whitcomb barking at Osborne in the corner. Okay, I think we're settled down. As folks, this is what we call a yard sale. Sticks and gloves all over the ice. We'll see who goes out. Monroe is out. Osborne is out. Nate Lewis heading down the locker room. Tori Pittner heading to the locker room. Okay, let's see. David Klee. I think that was Matt Vagridden. I think everybody that was on the ice is being sent to the locker room. Bauer Barry. Xavier Villa. All this happening with 11.20 left in the third. So the benches have gotten a little shorter here in the third period. And we will see what on earth Luke Stork and Alexander Borowiak are going to do with this one. Also heading off is Ethan Whitcomb. I think maybe one of the officials lost their whistle there in the scrum. So, officiating, <laughs> Dave Ferris says he's done. Officiating crew talking this over. Strathman and Kroll standing at the edge of the officials. Creaso waiting what on earth is going to go on here. You wonder if we're going to just get something like what happened in the NHL a couple of weeks ago. Everybody on the ice gets a misconduct. You know, the, the Instagram post from Muskegon on Friday said, we don't like these guys. Well, I'm here to tell you the feeling's mutual. As this one finally boiled over. Eleven twenty left here in the third. Our officiating crew still trying to sort this one out. The ninth and final game of the regular season between Youngstown and Muskegon. These two could, at least right now as the standings go, could potentially meet maybe in the conference final. Don't think it would be possible for them to meet in the second round. Well, I guess right now with Youngstown as the four seed, the winner of the four five series goes to play the number two seed. The winner of the three six series goes to play the number one seed. All right, looks like our officials maybe have things sorted out. Zach Bennett and Luke Stork talking to the captains as Alexander Borowiak talks to the timekeeper, Rob Russo. Rob will send everything up to the box for Lynn Se to Lynn Siegford, who she's just scratching her head. She's going to have a lot of work to do here over the next few minutes. So again, Muskegon took seven of the first eight. Phantoms got points in four of the first eight, but only able to get the win on December the 1st up at the Tim Hortons Iceplex. It's part of the USHL American Cup. Phantoms won that game 3-2. to two. Have lost in the shootout twice to Muskegon in overtime once this season. And okay. The officials have broken their huddle and they're going to come over and talk to the head coaches. On the board, we have a five-minute penalty to Matt Vagridden and a two-minute penalty to Michael Monroe. 
So it looks like three minutes of four on four upcoming, and then Youngstown will have a, I'm sorry, two minutes. Two minutes of four on four upcoming and then three minute major power play for Youngstown is what it looks like on the board right now. Again, all this happening with 11.20 left in the third period. Andrew Strathman puts the puck at the faceoff dot in the neutral zone. He says, all right, I'm ready to play. Let's go. I'm with you, Strat. 92 is five for a cross check and a game misconduct on Matt Vagren. <laughs> All right, let's see here. Twos and tens for Rusinski, Pittner, Osborne, Lewis, and Monroe. Twos and tens for Klee, Via, Barry, Gritton, and Whitcomb. And then also the additional five to Matt V. Gritton for cross checking. It looks like they're preparing to drop the puck to the left of Aiden Wright, but I think the initial penalty was going to be on the Jacks, and the faceoff should come at least at center. All right, I think we have everything sorted out, and we're ready for play again. Five players for each side have gone to the locker room. So the benches are quite a bit shorter right now. Faceoff will be to the left of Aiden Wright. We're playing four on four for the next two minutes, and Youngstown will have a three minute major power play. This face off is won by Pearson, but played ahead by Strathman, bumped ahead by Ramos. He'll float it back ahead. Ramos in the Muskegon zone, tried to play it into the corner, looking for Strathman, broken up by Young, has it in his skates. Kroll will take it away, carry it around the net. And the Jacks will skate it ahead. Into the neutral zone comes a coin to open ice, found Young. Into the zone, shot blocker, save Aiden Wright. Pamidian to the rebound, trying to get it up the wall past Pearson. Ramos comes in to help out his defenseman. Ramos, to an E, took a cross check to the head from a coin play, continues. Over to Toll, near point, his shot wide of the cage, but Midian played it over to Strathman. Strat around the cage, trying to get away from Pearson. Carries to the neutral zone, chipped it past one man, couldn't get it past the second, as a coin will carry ahead for Muskegon, but he has it poked away by Botterill at the red line. Wernalo will bump it back to Bamidian. Halfway home here in the four on four. Burchill to Botterill. Into the zone down the right side. He'll play it to the end wall. Toll gets there first. Chipped it past one man. Still battling for it is Burchill. Comes into the circle. Machu thought about a pinch. Instead, it's going to be Kroll carrying ahead. Machu hustling to get back into position as it's played past Norborg. Picked up by Toll. Got the shot away, but blocked by Burchill. Sent the rebound to the corner where it's picked up by Machu. He'll skate it ahead. Now played to Burchill at the red line. Mikey spins away and starts to resume the attack. Got past Norberg, but was bumped off his line, and the loose puck rolls free to Dahlheimer. Left it behind the cage for Toll, and now Boiver. Sasha Boiver, red line and blue, into the Youngstown zone. His shot blocked by Machu and Wilson. Jack got to the loose puck, fed it ahead. For Patilla, two goals on the game. Adam ahead to Serato. Charlie making a move, got hauled down. Play continues. Norberg got to lose puck as out of the box comes Zach Marin, who is serving the penalty for Monroe. Youngstown is now on the major power play, can score as much as they want in the next three minutes. Boisvert bumped off the puck by Strathman as it rolled to Patilla. Strathman to Young, across the ice for Botterill. Into the zone, dropped it back for Serato, back to Botterill, left half wall. Start, stop to Serato in the box, shot, missed the cage. 
Rebound to the Phantoms. That is Botterill. Right corner to Young. Grant to Serato, to Strathman, to Botterill, to Serato. One-timer, shot, save, rebound, loose in the blue paint. Hendricks has it in his skates. He couldn't find it. Young got to it behind the net. Patilla took it away from him. Young, Botterill, shot wide of the cage. Patilla up to the point for Strathman. Two minutes left in the major power play. Strathman through Young. He couldn't take the pass for the one-timer. Serato back across. Strathman, Young. Couldn't handle it in the box. Puck is cleared by Boulevard. Muskegon to the line change. Second power play unit gonna cycle on for Youngstown as well. Birchill carries ahead into the zone. As he gets double teamed, he fires it around in the left corner. Toll got there first. He's bumped by Marin. Zach got the puck, sent it back from whence it came, but nobody at the right point for Youngstown. Did Bamidian keep the line? He did not, and the Jacks will carry ahead. Nordberg just chipped it across the Youngstown line. Vance played it back out to center. That went to the Jacks, and they'll just try to kill some more time here. 110 left on the major power play. As Wilson gives it up to Bamidian. To Wilson. Into the Muskegon end. Left half wall. Back to the point for Sasha. Burchill. Played around to the right corner. Wilson pinching in on the play. Comes up the wall. Kept there by Veronin. Back down the wall. Now up to Bamidian at the point. Given up to Wilson. Now center point Bamidian. Sasha eyed the cage. Tried to make a pass down low. Broken up by the Jacks. And they just get it past the stick of Bamidian. And out to center. 35 seconds left on the power play for Youngstown. Wilson into the zone. Kept the line somehow. Fed it weak side for Serato. Charlie just threw it in front of the net. But nobody was there for Youngstown. Jack skated to the line and set down the ice by Pearson. 20 seconds left on the power play for the Phantoms. Bamidian pressured by Kroll. Young in to support the defenseman. 10 seconds left in the power play. Young got it free of the scrum, played it to Botterill with five seconds left on the advantage. Botterill to the red line. Just dumps it wide of the cage, comes hard off the end wall, and out of the box comes Joe Connor, who was serving the penalty for Gritton. Patilla, toe drag, shot blocked to the corner. Young to Botterill, to Serato, fed it in front, hit bodies and bounce just past Patilla, looking for the hat trick. Hanrahan to the puck, played it into the Muskegon bench with 6.02. Left in the third, we'll have our final media time out of the game. Phantoms lead 7-3. You're listening to Youngstown Phantoms Hockey on Western Reserve Radio and Flow Hockey. Good evening, passengers. From this moment on, cell phones should be switched on and put into flashlight mode. May we ask for your attention while our cabin crew demonstrates the safety features on this flight. Please raise both hands up in the sky. Now slowly wave from the left. To the right. Left. Right. Left. Right. Left. Right. Left. Right. Left. Right, left, 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 right, left,
They combine hand to hand and overhand right. They'll tangle. A couple of right handed throws by Dahlheimer. Another one by Hanrahan. Hanrahan hammers the back of the head. Dahlheimer, one right to the jaw. They're still wrestling. Uppercut, uppercut there by Hanrahan, trying to rip the helmet off. Dahlheimer looks like he's in trouble here. Hanrahan wrestles Dahlheimer to the ground. What a spirited bout that was. Hanrahan's night will be done. And the benefit of fighting at 535 is there is no automatic suspension for fighting in the final five minutes. Though who knows, the way this game has gone, they may make an exception. As now each bench gets one shorter. If you're just tuning in, at 11.20 here in the third period, we had a full-on line brawl. Every player on the ice except for the goaltenders got a misconduct. Got two and 10, their nights are over. So each bench now missing six combatants. I don't know if we've had an old fashioned gong show here in Youngstown for a while. Face off will be in the Youngstown end to the Glove side of Aiden Wright, who has stopped 13 out of 16. Jacks control the draw. Kroll looking for O'Coin at the red line. Broken up by Patilla. Adam played it ahead, was looking for Bottero. Passes off line, O'Coin sends it out to center for Kroll. Backhands it ahead, played away from Young by Wilson, picked up by Serrato. Charlie, across. Got it to Serrato. Charlie into the zone down the left side, got it to Bottero, toe drag shot, glove saved by Roberts. Rebound came to Spitznagel, sends it off the window, and the Jacks will skate it ahead. Played over to Pearson. Bumped it down the wall to a coin. Taken away by Botterill. Cleared the line, which was kept by Spitznagel. But as he tried to dump it down low, went right to Machu. Spins in his own zone and... Whistle at center as Cody Kroll punches Charlie Serrato right in the mouth. And I think maybe these two are... Or at least Serrato's being helped to the penalty box. No, it's Cooper Pearson. And I wonder if these... They're both not just going to be sent to the locker room. Slashing call I see given on Serrato. Maybe it is just a Youngstown penalty. 4.45 left in the third. As Pearson talking, chirping the Youngstown bench all the way to the line change. Looks like Youngstown is heading to the Adams Tree Preservation penalty kill. Face off will be to the blocker side of Aiden Wright. 4.45 left in regulation. Youngstown leads by four. Haven't seen a goal here in the third period, but plenty of fireworks. As Muskegon wins the draw, Claire's to Boisvert. Cross to the right point, back to Claire's. Boisvert, left circle, shot right to the chest of Aiden Wright. He'll hang on as Spitznagel gets shoved to the side of the blue paint. Machu tugging at the back of somebody's jersey. I think that is number six, Miles Gust. Who, if you're listening to the pregame show, was listed among the scratches, but is also listed as being dressed today. Well, Miles Gust is on the ice. And because the Muskegon defenseman came down below the top of the dots off the puck freezing, they're going to bring the face off to the neutral zone. 12 seconds gone on the Adams Street Preservation penalty kill. 
as Muskegon controls the faceoff. It's Bovere in his own zone. Snapped out to center, now back for Bovere. Into the zone, swings out to left, watched by Machu, got the shot away, mask save by right, rebound to Pearson. Over to Bovere, now center point for Claire's. Back to Bovere, being watched by Birchall, back over to Claire's on the far side, pass out of his reach, but poked it into the corner. Machu reaching out for it, couldn't get the clear. Spitznagel to Claire's, up to the point for Bovere. Thought about the shot, now gives it over to Claire's, pumped it across over to Pearson, back up to Bovere at the point. Bovere across the top of the circles, fed it back door, and then Fanning on the shot was Spitznagel. Rebound to Claire's, brings it up the far wall, fed to the line for Bovere, now over to Pearson. Trying to get around Birchall, he'll spin at the right half, back to the point for Bovere. Bovere spin around of his own, back to Pearson, back to Bovere in the corner. Bovere fed it on net, and it's kicked out by right rebound, right back to Bovere, 40 seconds left on the kill. Spitznagel, back to Bovere, up to the point for Pearson. Pearson, left dot for Claire's shot blocked in the slot, actually hit Miles Gust, rebound cleared out to center by Youngstown. Claire's hustling back for it, but I think both sides are going to go for a line change here with 25 seconds left on the Adams Tree Preservation penalty kill. Back to the line for Galanic, over to Hendricks. Hendricks to the point to Kroll, back to Hendricks. Now side of the cage, they score. Jack Galanic, his 10th goal of the season. Another power play goal for Muskegon. Here tonight, three of their four goals have come on the power play. And Muskegon trails 7-4, time of the goal, 17-03. <coughs> Phantoms had a chance to clear it, just couldn't get it out of the zone. It was great work there by Hunter Ramos, bottling up the two Muskegon men there at the near point, just couldn't get it out to center. And I think three passes later, ends up in the back of the Phantoms net. Here it's Patilla coming into the zone, fanned on the shot from the right corner. He'll battle for it down there. Picked up by the Jackson, sent out to center. Kroll picks it up in front of the benches, bumped it ahead to the red line, taken there by Strathman. Off of Verone, and it rolls into the Muskegon end. Hendricks, fans on the pass. He'll battle against Patilla behind the net. Picked up by the Phantoms. Up to the point for Bermidian. Sasha, full slapper, missed everything. Strathman. Kept it in, fed it back down low, but Toll's going to pick it up behind the cage. Got it away from Patilla. He'll carry up the far wall and bounce it out to center. Picked up in the neutral zone by Bamidian. Out to center for Botterill. Now drop back for Strathman. Two minutes left in the third. Sorry, 2-10 as Strathman gains the red line. Fires it off the left corner. Boards comes around to Botterill near side. Bots dropped it back for a one-timer by Verone and then missed the net. Jacks to the rebound, they carry ahead, it's Connor. Into the zone, chipped in on net. Wright will throw the trapper on top of it and hang on. 151 left in regulation. Phantoms lead by three. Face off will be to the blocker side of Aiden Wright who has stopped 17 out of 21 tonight. Ronaldo wins the draw to Wilson. Backhands it up the far boards and out to center for Ramos. Hunter poked it into the Muskegon zone where it's taken by Joe Connor, lifted off the glass and down the ice. No icing here as Machu will pick it up just before the goal line, send it over to Wilson. Jack ahead, redirected into the zone by Ramos. Rolls to the right corner. Claires is there for Muskegon. Left it for Nordberg. Ottawa Senators draft pick sends it Near side, and the Jacks will bring it into the zone, but the pass for Spitznagel did not go. Machu got to it first in the left corner, behind the net for Wilson. Jack around the kick play, but it's picked off by Pearson. To Spitznagel, it's in his skates, loose in front of the net. Wilson's going to skate it out of danger. Jack brought it to the line, but then had it back checked away by Galanic. Most recent goal scorer here today. And we have one minute remaining in regulation. Phantoms lead by three. Played down low for the Muskegon defense, though. Fired around the boards for O'Coin. Touched it past Marin and out to center. Picked up there by Spitznagel. Flying into the Youngstown zone. Dropped it behind him for Galanic. Played into the left corner. Back to Spitznagel. 
Right side for Boivere, tried to fire a sharp angle shot and bank it in, but missed everything. Here's a shot from the left half ball by Young, kicked out by right. Young to his own rebound, trying to just walk in front, comes to the near side, and Marin just gonna bump it down the ice. O'Coin picks it up just inside his own line with 25 seconds left in regulation. As Boivere spins at his own blue line, 15 seconds left in the game. Muskegon seems content to just wind this one out with 10 seconds left. Gust redirects it into the zone looking for Kroll, but Marin bumps it to Bomidian. Three seconds left in regulation, and the Youngstown Phantoms beat the Muskegon Lumberjacks today by the final of 7-4. Shots on goal for the game, 32-22 to in favor of Youngstown. We're going to go ahead and step aside for a timeout, and when we come back, we'll have the post-game show here for you on West Reserve Radio and Flow Hockey. Valley's leader for golf, Milk Creek Golf Course is now booking tee times for 2024. We offer stay and play opportunities available with nine area hotel partners. For more information, visit our website at millcreekmetroparks.org. Also, look for new exciting opportunities coming soon, including an indoor player development center with Trackman, an indoor Callaway club fitting center, and an Odyssey fitting studio in 2024. Follow us on Facebook at Milk Creek Golf Course or call 330-740-7112. When disaster strikes, you don't have time to waste. You need Crago's Restoration, your trusted partner in restoring your home. From water damage and flood restoration to sewage cleanup, we've got you covered. And that's not all. We also offer pressure washing, mold remediation, and even interior demolition. Certified in flood and sewage damage restoration, we're the experts you can count on. Call Crago's Restoration today at 330-610-4193. 330-610-4193. Crago's Restoration, where your home's recovery begins. The Double Tree by Hilton Youngstown Downtown is proud to be the official hotel partner of the Youngstown Phantoms. Located in downtown's historical standby building and fully updated with today's amenities while preserving its historical charm and neoclassical architecture of 1907. Offering modern conveniences such as on-site room service, free Wi-Fi, complimentary business center, and a 24-hour fitness center. Events are also memorable with over 5,000 square feet of meeting space, including our top floor ballroom accented by 13-foot ceilings, Palladian windows, and views from 12 stories up. Conveniently located within walking distance to the Cavelli Center, the Youngstown Foundation Amphitheater, Youngstown State University, Oh Wow Science Center, and Dior Performing Arts Center, the Doubletree by Hilton Youngstown Downtown is a proud partner of the Youngstown Phantoms and invites you to be our valued guest. You hear it all the time. Why Youngstown State University? Here's why. Because when it comes to engineering, medicine, sports, business, and the skills you need to take your place in the world, we take a backseat to nobody. Because we're the kind of people who look out for each other. Because we care about you, your success, and our future together. We are Youngstown State University, and now you know why. Feeling dehydrated or sluggish? Did you enjoy your Phantoms game just a little too much? We can help you get back on track and hydrated in record time. With our vitamin-infused IV drips, we'll have you feeling healthy and energized so you can get back to your busy schedule. Whether you want to boost your immune system, increase your energy, or stay healthy through the winter months, we can help. Find us on Facebook or theyoungstowndrip.com and book your appointment today. Welcome back to Western Reserve Radio's coverage of the Youngstown Phantoms. Now here's the voice of the Phantoms, Matt Lipsack. Welcome back inside the Cavelli Center for the postgame show. Your final score here today, Youngstown 7 and Muskegon 4. Still waiting for an update on the final shots on goal. I think it was 32 to 22. They put one more shot up for Muskegon right there at the buzzer. Let's get you a scoring recap from tonight's game. A high event first period, seven goals scored in the first period. 
Youngstown would get the first two of them. As at 301, it was Michael Monroe, his first in the USHL. Adam Patilla with the assist. Connor DeHaro made it two to nothing. Youngstown a minute later at 401 with his second of the year. Nathan Lewis with the assist. At 509, Sasha Bouvier gets the 100th point of his USHL career with a power play goal for Bouvier, his 30th goal of the season. Ethan Whitcomb and Joe Connor with the helpers. Youngstown makes it 3-1 to one at 10:39. Kuzma Verone in his ninth of the year. Patilla and Sam Ranallo with the assist. Ryan Bottero makes it 4-1 to one at 12-11, his 22nd of the season. Serrato and Lewis with the helpers. 14:45. Justin Solovey, a power play goal for Muskegon. 19th goal of the season. Xavier Vio with the assist. And then at 18-01, it was Cody Kroll with his 20th of the season. Ty Hendricks and Cooper Pearson with the assist. Youngstown led 4-3 at the end of the first period. Second period, all three goals belong to Youngstown. At 4-15, it's Adam Patillo with his 22nd of the season. Zach Marin and Colson Hanrahan with the assist. Then at the five-minute mark, Charlie Serrato with his 11th of the season. Kuzma Veronin with the assist. And then at 8-18, Patillo with a power play goal. 23rd goal of the season, second goal of the game. Andrew Strathman and Grant Young with the assist. Youngstown led 6-3, to three, sorry, 7-3 to three at the end of the second. Only goal of the third period was scored at 17-03. was Jack Galanik with a power play goal. Assist to Jake Toll and Cody Kroll as three of the Muskegon four goals are scored on the power play. And that is how we got to our 7-4 to four final. Sheikha Godziev started the game for Muskegon, was pulled after the fourth Youngstown goal. Godziev stopped eight out of 12. Miles Roberts came on in release. He stopped 10 out of 13. Aiden Wright got the win for Youngstown. He stopped 18 out of 22. Muskegon power play was three for seven. Youngstown power play was one for four. Three stars of the game. Third star went to Michael Monroe. Second star went to Charlie Serrato. And the first star with four points in the game went to Adam Patilla. That will conclude the Phantoms' eight-game homestand. They are heading on the road for the next four. Next weekend, they will be in Sioux City for a Saturday-Sunday set. And then the following weekend, they will be in Fargo for a Friday-Saturday set to take on the Fargo Force, who they beat in last year's Clark Cup Final, and to visit old friends Finn McLaughlin and Brandon Svoboda. Youngstown will return to the Cavelli Center for a five-game homestand. Actually, check that, a six-game homestand. As for the first time in team history, Youngstown will be wrapping up the regular season on the road. We had a venue conflict and had to trade home and away dates with Team USA on the final weekend of the season. So Youngstown will be back here on March the 29th to take on the Madison Capitals. Then the following weekend, they'll have a 3-3 three and three against Green Bay and then a home and home against Team USA to wrap up the regular season. Great seats still available for all of those games here at the Cavelli Center. You can call the Phantoms box office for tickets and more information. 330-747-PUCK. That's 330-747-7825. For my engineers, Dave Ferris and Jim Craven. Interns, Brendan and Kyle, keeping things 100 on social media for us here this afternoon. My name is Matt Lipsack, the voice of the Youngstown Phantoms, assisted by my son John here today. One more time, your final score. And thank you for tuning in today, everybody. One more time, the final score. Youngstown 7 and Muskegon 4 will catch you back here at the Cavelli Center on March the 29th. Sound out. Fade to black. We thank you for joining us for this special presentation of the iMedia One Network, and we now return you to your regularly scheduled programming.